Yeah. Okay, I'd like to bring the Upper Moreland Township regular board meeting for June 5th, 2023. Uh, first, a moment of silence. Would you please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Matt, uh, would you take roll? Four one. Four two. Here. Four three. Here. Four four. Here. Here. Four six. Here. Four seven. Here. Mr. President, all commissioners are present. Okay, and we also have uh, Sean Kilkenny from Kilkenny Law, our solicitor, and Matt is our township manager here. Okay, uh, first uh, we have a presentation of the Joseph A. Laval Community Scholarship yes. Award. Uh, our recipient is jo uh, yes, Joseph Laura. Good one. Cash and Jones. Uh, if you would come up right here and Teresa Laval. Would you come up also? In the door, sir. And I'm sorry, door. <laughs> Can't be shy tonight. Okay, tonight, uh, this board has started a scholarship fund a few years ago that uh, Charles Whiting had come up with an idea to do this. And uh, so far, we've had a few winners. Tonight, in front of us, we have Cashin Jones from Upper Moreland High School. And uh, with us, we have Teresa, which is Joe Laval's wife, who this is all named after, uh, here also. And I just want to say just a couple extracurricular activities. I thought this was pretty impressive. Drama company, track, academic, quiz ball, art club, bear print, debate club. We're not debating with you. Uh, okay. uh, the drama club, gender and sexuality alliance, interact club, key club, national honor society, mini thon, and you matter club. These are just a few out of this whole page. Uh, and it just shows you how wide the variety is of what this young man has done uh, just in Upper Moreland. And uh, he is going on to University of Central Florida. Uh, so we would like to say congratulations. Thank you so much. You that? Thank you. Wow. Thank you. And, and here I'm sorry, I don't know who you are because we were running late. Okay. Congratulations to you. And the niece, his grandma. Ah, even better. <laughs> so, thank you. That's Central Florida calling. <laughs> <laughs> Right. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And even better, there's Thank your check. You. Thank <laughs> you. I almost forgot that Thank part. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, the board can stay down there. Uh, I'm in control. No. Next, uh, Anthony. Yeah. Would um, you do the presentation for Eagle Scout? I will be happy to do that. But before I do that, I wanted to add uh, one more thing to, to Cashin's uh, achievements. Um, you talked about everything that he's done for Upper Moreland, but you missed all the things that he's doing for the country. And I think your involvement uh, as the Human Resources Director for Environmental Justice Committee yes. is fantastic, right? And the things that you're doing for this nation should be definitely commended. But remember where you came from, because we need the help here too, right? So go off, go to college, do all the things you're gonna do elsewhere, come on back, and then you're gonna be up here at some point or, or somewhere else uh, within the county. So really look forward to seeing the things you're gonna do because you've already achieved so much. I'd like to take a moment just to, to comment on uh, Joe Laval, and long before he passed, he was always recognizing service to community. And uh, although we did um, choose to name this in his honor, he was very much trying to get something like this started before he passed. Am I going down here? Fine, yep. What? Microphone down there. Oh, no, yeah. Okay, so it's time to uh, commend another high-performing youth in our township. Um, specifically, I'm honored for this because this is a Ward, ward 4 uh, resident, and I'm Ward 4, so this is great. Um, we have a lot of talent. In this in this township, um, and Catherine C. Moran is uh, a perfect example of that talent. Um, so we're here today uh, to present this commendation for Catherine's achievements, um, and I will read the legalese without the trumpet fanfare. So bear with me here. Whereas Catherine C. Moran is a founding member and the second Eagle Scout of Troop 818, and whereas Catherine was nominated by her peers to become a member of the Order of the Arrow, an honors program in Scouts BSA that focuses on service. And whereas Catherine has been a very active scout, attending camping trips and outings throughout PA, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, and including a trip to Canada for the Scouts Centennial Ontario, Pennsylvania Expedition uh, Exchange Program. Whereas Catherine has also participated in several service projects, including making blankets for children in hospitals, placing flags and wreaths on veteran grave sites, and assembling care packages and meals for the elderly and people with food insecurity. And whereas Catherine volunteered for several years as a den chief and an assistant cub master at Cub Scout Day camps for a week uh, every summer. And whereas for her Eagle Scout project, Catherine organized and led approximately 20 volunteers who logged over 100 hours in cleaning 128 headstones at St. Thomas Church Cemetery in White Marsh, Pennsylvania. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Upper Mormon Township Board of Commissioners offers its commendation to Catherine C. Moran for her earning the Eagle Scout Award and extend its sincere appreciation for her important contributions toward the betterment of our community. This commendation is presented by the Upper Mormon Township Board of Commissioners on the fifth day, sixth day of June, 2023. So, Catherine, come on up. I'll pass this over to you. Thank you. Let's do that. Shake your hand. This is great. So, I think the other amazing part of all of this is um, it was 2019, right, where the the uh, Boy Scouts of America became the Scouts of America, and since then you have traveled that ranks all the way through to get you here to be an Eagle Scout. It's awesome. Like you're paving the way for so many other young women. Uh, to become scouts and Eagle Scouts. So congratulations, this is really a great, great honor. Thank you. 
Thank you. Awesome. Clap for it. This is great. All right. Um, other commissioners, come up. We'll take a photo real quick. We'll do commissioners first, then we can get out of the way. Something I forgot, too, and, and Catherine, for you to network, uh, Commissioner Whiting is an Eagle Scout. And our, uh, our township manager, Matt Kalin, is also an Eagle Scout. So they've achieved a lot, too. <laughs> While we're reorganized, I just want to announce that uh, the board had met in an executive session uh, for some legal and personnel matters uh, before this meeting tonight. Okay, uh, next we'll get into the public hearings. Uh, we have a public hearing, 1963 ordinance. 1741 to receive comments regarding the change in zoning ordinance classification request submitted by bt blair llc for the redevelopment of the property known as the executive muse located at 2300 computer avenue 2309 and 2317 from blair mill road still executive muse muse uh make a motion to open public hearing 1933 we got a motion, we have a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, President McFatridge. Uh, tonight, so the public understands, there is a public hearing on a, on the, uh, on a potential zoning change for Ordinance 1741. What I'm going to go ahead and do is mark some exhibits uh, for the record. I'll mark them as T exhibits, uh, just so we have them in the record. Additionally, Mr. McHugh, who is, uh, is counsel, uh, for BT Blair LLC. Uh, we'll also have some exhibits that he previously provided in a packet to myself, which were distributed to the commissioners and our court reporter here. Um, so there'll be an opportunity for a presentation. There'll be an opportunity uh, for board questions and comments. There'll be an opportunity for public comment. And then the board can either continue the public hearing to a later date if they need more information or close the public hearing and potentially take action. I also, uh, I also, uh, in speaking to Mr. McHugh, I know that the board has several hearings tonight and it might be a lengthier agenda. I did say if it was amenable, uh, he could do what's called an offer of proof, meaning uh, basically uh, testify as to what uh, the witnesses would testify to. We can call the witnesses up for then additional questions related to that. Uh, so we can we can basically uh, narrow the focus as to that rather than getting all the background on all these witnesses per se, uh, just a matter of time. So I'm going to go ahead and mark some exhibits so everyone understands where we are procedurally. Uh, so T1 uh, will be a copy of uh, the application uh, to the township. T2 will be a copy of the proof of publication of this public hearing in the Intelligencer. Uh, T3 uh, will be a copy of the review uh, by our township, engine, uh, township engineer, Gilmore and Associates. T4 will be uh, a copy of all the exhibits such as warranty deeds and such requiring property ownership. 
uh, as is required to move forward on this, the M MPC. Uh, T5 will be a copy of the review by McMahon, our traffic engineer. Uh, T6 will be a copy of the Montgomery County Planning Commission review dated May 2nd, 2023. Um, and then T7 will be a copy of the APA's uh, review here. Um, and uh, so perhaps the, the best thing to go ahead and before Mr. McHugh uh, begins his presentation, perhaps the court reporter can swear all the witnesses in uh, just so we take care of that. Uh, sure, I would have three potential witnesses. They would be George Hartman, David Babbitt, and Peter Cleland. All are here, right here. Thank you, Mr. Kilkenny. And uh, for the board's, uh, so the board's aware, I had, did hand up a packet consisting of three exhibits. Uh, exhibit one is a highlighted survey of the property, which was included in the application. Exhibit two is the uh, CV of Mr. Babbitt, who was just sworn. And exhibit three is his planning analysis report. Uh, as an offer of proof, I would, uh, for Mr. Hartman, if he were called to testify, he would state that the subject properties of the application are 2309 Blair Mill Road and 2317 Blair Mill Road. 2309 Blair Mill Road, if you look at exhibit one, is highlighted in blue, and it is an approximately 43,500 square foot parcel with frontage along Blair Mill Road. 2317 Blair Mill Road is an approximately 43,558 square foot parcel uh, that's highlighted in yellow. Both of those parcels are currently zoned O office. They are part of the Executive Muse office complex, which actually contains a larger parcel that is zoned I limited industrial, which contains the actual office buildings. All three parcels are in common ownership. As part of the redevelopment proposal, the two parcels will be consolidated with the larger parcel into a single 12.06 acre parcel. As a result, the larger consolidated parcel will be split zoned with the majority being zoned I limited industrial and the remainder being O office. The proposal that is before you this evening is to rezone the two smaller parcels from O office to I limited industrial to provide for uniform zoning classification across the consolidated property. If Mr. Babbitt were called to testify, he would state that he is an expert in land planning as designated by his uh, CV, which is exhibit two in your packet. He has significant experience dealing with uh, land planning issues in municipalities such as Upper Moreland Township. He also prepared a report regarding the rezoning request. Uh, that is exhibit three in your packet. The report summarizes the existing property uh, and the surrounding area along with the proposed redevelopment project. It also analyzes the zoning for the surrounding area and the 2040 Township Comprehensive Plan. Uh, the report concludes that in Mr. Babbitt's professional opinion, the rezoning of the two parcels will be consistent and compatible with the surrounding land uses, surrounding zoning, and the township's 2040 comprehensive plan. If Mr. Clellan were called to testify, he would state that he is an authorized representative of BT Blair LLC, that BT Blair LLC is the owner of the three parcels that comprise the executive muse complex, he is familiar with the rezoning application and its contents, and he would confirm that it is the applicant's request to have the two smaller parcels rezoned from O office to I limited industrial. That would be the presentation. I just ask each of my witnesses affirm the testimony. So George, you heard everything that I just stated. Uh, would you state that to be your testimony if called in a question and answer format? Yes, I would. David, same question to you? Yes, sir, that's correct. And Peter, same to you? Yes. And then we'll go ahead and mark uh, what you've provided as applicant in one exhibit, applicant exhibit one, just so it's in the record. And we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, hopefully this is a quick one. So the, I guess, what are we calling this exhibit T8? Sure. And now, um, you referenced parcels 2309 and 2317, correct? Correct. All right, is that, that's the proper numbers because this says 2319. It covers this 23 23 and 2017 the tax parcel numbers are correct and the ordinance is correct okay but the, the Blair Mill Road addresses are 2309 and 2317 okay correct okay. thank you that's all we have. did the board have any questions any of the witnesses we want to call up or ask for information uh, we'll start with our 
Chairman of this department, Kevin. I'm good. You're good. Uh, Anthony, we'll go right across that side. Anything else? Uh, no, it's a fairly straightforward application, I think. Okay. Uh, Nick. Hey, what's going to happen? <laughs> we put all this together. There's a pending conditional use application. This was the first step in the process. So that conditional app use application for the overall redevelopment is pending. Uh, based on uh, feedback from your professional staff, they suggested we go through the rezoning first. Once this is approved, we're planning an apartment complex, which is part they of the- They already had a presentation here. Yeah. 252 apartments or something? I believe that's the correct number, yes. Yeah. In here, 272 apartments. 272, I'm sorry. Uh, units, 408 required parking spaces. Uh, oh, you go first. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Uh, I do. Um, uh, so Montgomery County Planning Commission has one of the, the concern they noted was the heavily wooded parcel. So what is the plan for that? So the, the rezoning right now does not change any aspects of the of those parcels. I got it. If they will be part of the conditional use application, we'll take that into account as we continue to work okay. through our plans. Okay, so just it was brought up by them, mm -hmm. so I wanted to note. I there's have, another. I have a concern with that too. Yeah. And um and the conditional use, I have a concern. I'm not. I, I'm. I support the rezone, mm -hmm. but I do have, as I said, that concern, and a concern with um. The conditional use and changing more of our prop of our zoning to um from commercial to residential but we'll get to that right Just i think that's, to note that. we're receiving a number of comments on the conditional use we'll take those into account okay. consider appropriate revisions and then we'll be back before you to discuss those okay thank you Sam, any questions oh I'm just <clears throat> happy to see more property that does not have any stormwater management come before us for redevelopment and we have the opportunity of making up one township better. Okay. Charles, anything to add? No, I'm just glad she's redevelopment. Okay. Uh, the only thing I will add uh, to this so you know later, I see your, your parking is 1.5. This board's been talking about, uh, normally it would be 2, 2.0. We've been looking for 1.75 because some of the apartments that we've been doing are full in the parking space. Not saying over full, but they're full at 1.5. That's just 1. a point seven. Sure. Uh, yeah, later on uh, as you go through the, the process. Other than that, uh, we have seen uh, pictures of this, the sketch plans and stuff. It, it's nice that it's the way how you did it, not one big, huge building. Uh, you broke it up into big buildings little buildings and uh makes it look like townhouses some of it. it's very nice uh, i will open it up to the public anybody have any comments on this again this is just for the zoning uses the zoning change okay With that we have no questions uh i'll entertain a motion to close it i'll, entertain, I'll make a motion to close public hearing number 1963. Okay, I have a motion. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Abstain? So moved. The stage is an agenda item later in the meeting. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next public hearing, number 1964, ordinance number 1742, receive comment regarding a change in zoning ordinance classification request submitted by Upper Moreland Township for the land located at Center Avenue, Park Avenue, known as the Township Municipal Complex as we sit here. So I'll make a motion over public hearing 1964. Second. I have a motion, I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against, opposed? Okay, so moved. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a little unorthodox because we are essentially as a board changing our own zoning. That's uh, me. Many, <laughs> many, Many, uh, many town or her own complex. Many, many townships go ahead and exempt themselves from this process, but this board in an effort to be transparent is going above and beyond and going through the, uh, the full zoning process uh, and review to go ahead and do this. This is very much going to mirror uh, what we just did. I'm gonna go ahead and mark some exhibits, put them in the record, uh, see if anybody in the board would like to comment or question themselves 
on this uh, on this matter and <laughs> offer an opportunity uh, for some public comment on this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mark a, a in exhibit uh, T1, uh, which will be a, a copy of the application uh, for this rezoning uh, by the township. Uh, T2 will be a, a, a copy of the the um, the uh, in the intelligencer of uh, the advertisements of this public hearing. Uh, T uh, T3 will be a copy of uh, the review uh, by our by the Montgomery County Planning Commission. Uh, T4, hold on a second. T4 will be a copy of the APA's review of this project. Uh, and I believe those are the exhibits that we have in the packet uh, for the record now. I don't believe there are any objections or a particular comment related from any other uh, township uh, professionals related to this. So I'll turn it back to you. Okay. Uh, the reason for this, we have purchased uh, houses behind us on Center Avenue over the years. Uh, they are still listed as residential, even though we use some as uh, parking. Uh, this is zoned differently than the residential where you're sitting now and with the library next door. What we wanted to do was make sure it's all zoned the same. Uh, so that is the reason that we're doing this. Uh, and the real reason at the end of the day, eventually, uh, the police station, a new police station will be built behind us on this property. Uh, and then this building will be here uh, for administration and all of our other offices. So instead of just deeming this by ourselves, just saying, yes, we're going to do this, we wanted to, to do it publicly. Uh, so that's the reason for this. Anybody else on the board would like to add anything else? Uh this is uh, our comprehensive plan and a lot of work done by the APA and commissioners before us uh, that we all see this vision of town center and um, we're embracing that and sharing it with the community. Anthony? Again, pretty straightforward. We, we, we're trying to consolidate this so we can develop this uh, township campus as one uniform center of campus, center of town. Okay, thank you. Charles? Charles? Okay. Uh, any public comment? Yes. Yeah. And? Uh, my name is... Yeah, uh, yeah. Please, please state your name and address. Oh, uh, Thomas Almarini. Uh, residence 18 Center Avenue. I live right here on the block. I've uh, been in the community for almost 20 years. I also serve the uh, library and have a number, had the privilege of meeting a number of commissioners uh, as a volunteer for uh, the uh, trustees as well as the friends. Uh, so I'm just as a community resident, I've spoke with a number of my neighbors who've noticed, seen the notices around. Uh, we did notice that one of the property marks that the surveyors put out uh, was actually placed about a foot in uh, to uh, a property on Center Avenue. So it, we were wondering if there's going to be any change to the properties. Is it going to affect, because uh, I know that, you know, there's, I guess there's a fence, there's some fencing along the line, uh, that line which separates the backyards with the library property. So I'm wondering if there's going to be any changes involved with that or if that's just a, okay, you so, know. Uh, we did have it surveyed just okay. for that reason. So we do know what is ours uh, and what isn't. Okay. Uh, that was just done. Okay. Is that correct? The yes. Survey. Okay. With that, we did find out maybe six inches a foot. There's, there's some things uh, on some properties that we are up against. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work with them. We're not willing. We're not here to take somebody's property away or okay. anything like that. So we're going to work with them uh, on that. Uh, we don't need that. Uh, but that will be coming through from the, the manager. Uh, he'll be uh, dealing with them directly but okay. uh, we have no intentions of uh, changing something of their property okay right? so it's just more of a zoning out. zoning change in terms of the property that's what it is actually. that's what we're okay. here for but well, I can right. answer one comment about the fencing I mean there's some fencing going to be going up and that's for the library's outdoor education center correct yeah I'm, I'm familiar with that project yeah Okay. But well, you asked a question about fencing. I just want everybody to understand. Yeah, because I know that I think the a lot of the fencing is was put up by the property owners 
at least ours was already installed when we moved into the property 20 years ago so this board does not know about that i found okay. out late today okay. uh, from our engineer that i think i'm not even sure when they did it friday right uh, i think uh he gave me a call late this afternoon he said just okay. in case somebody brings it up with this he said it shouldn't be a big deal uh you know we'll, we'll work that out with you. So, okay okay all right well, i want to thank you all for your service with the community thank you very much thank you for your, thank you for your service <laughs> okay uh, any other comments from the public no that's an i'll make a motion. motion to close there's a comment oh, oh, sorry. oh. Wait, wait. you gotta come up you and get come up and identify yourself i live directly behind yeah, yeah i'm Vern siebenauer on 107 center This uh, zoning is it going to affect the north side of East uh, Tenter? Will it affect the north? The zoning? Yeah. Okay. What we're doing tonight is the zoning of this whole property that's grass that you see that's ours. Oh. Okay. Uh, what they're talking about is there's like a foot or so that over the years somebody's fences, let's say technically on our property, which. I don't oh. think we're that concerned with and we'll work out so it's only what the grass area is what we're rezoning for ourselves nobody okay. else's property okay good i think it's six formerly residential properties zoned r4 uh, that we're trying to consolidate into tc1 zoning i'll make a motion to close public hearing 1964. second thank you a motion we have a second uh all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. Against. So we moved, approved. Okay. Motion. Go ahead, go, Sam. <laughs> Public hearing 1965 to receive comments regarding the conditional use application submitted by Federal Realty OPLP for the property located at 10 170 Park Avenue, known as the Willow Grove Shopping Center across the street. Make a motion to open public hearing 1965. Second. A motion to have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay. Um, th this is going to be a, a slightly different uh, process because this is a, a a public hearing on a conditional a potential conditional use approval. Uh, the last two were, were zoning changes. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I just wanted to see is any uh, I'm going to explain um, the conditional use approval is, is akin to being in front of the zoning hearing board applying for a special exception and stuff. Uh, so I just want to see is anybody here uh, requesting what's called party status. Let me explain what party status is just so everybody understands. If you live within uh, usually about a 500 foot uh, radiant uh, a mailing radius of where the property is or are affected by a potential this potential uh, conditional use change you can request party status party status means you'd have the ability to go ahead and cross-examine any witnesses that mr. Freemuth uh, the attorney for the applicant would put on or call any witnesses yourself uh, there is no need to request party status if you just want to comment you'll also have the ability to go ahead and do that at the end uh, but party status gives you a, a little more rights to go ahead and cross-examine the witnesses. Also, it gives you um, a, a better sense, of, a better standing if you choose to appeal uh, this conditional use um, decision and hearing if one is granted. So I just wanted to see, does anyone want to raise their hand? And is anybody requesting party status? Okay. This, 1965. 1965. This is the Willow Grove Shopping Center. So, so you're not, right? Not. Okay, okay. So just want to be clear. So that's that's kind of clear on the record. Then I'm going to go through uh, very similar to what we did in the two zoning hearings. I'm going to go ahead and mark a series of exhibits. Uh, then Mr. Freemuth uh, may go ahead and uh, call some witnesses. I know he has some. I'm going to ask that they be sworn in like we did. He will make an offer of proof like uh, Mr. McHugh did. 
and then there would be an opportunity uh, for you to ask additional questions if you had questions related to this. So I'm just going to mark some exhibits from the township. Before you go, Sean, um, Andy Freemuth here on behalf of the applicant. I do have um, my witnesses who are going to provide brief yeah. testimony instead of the offer of proof, if that's okay. Oh, okay. I can, do it that I way, can address fine. that in, in opening comments to the board after you mark the exhibits, if that's all right. Sure, if okay. you'd like to. Sure. Sure case. Okay. Um, T1 will be a copy of the proof of uh, publication in the Intelligencer, or newspaper's uh, general circulation. T2 will be a copy of the zoning application itself. Um, Uh, T3 will be a review by our traffic engineer of this project. Okay, T4 will be uh, the review of Gilmore engineers, uh, our township engineer of this project. Uh, T5 will be a copy of uh, the Montgomery County Planning Commission review of this project. And T6 will be a copy of our APA planning agency review of this pro uh, project. Um, Mr. Freemuth, it's your case. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Again, Andy Freemuth uh, here on behalf of the applicant Federal Realty. Uh, as you know, this is a conditional use hearing for the Willow Grove Shopping Center, uh, which concerns a proposed mid slash high rise apartment building containing six stories uh, with first floor mixed use, uh, which is permitted by conditional use in your town center zoning district. Um, obviously, this, this proposal has been before um, this board and the other boards and, and committees and commissions in the township several times, so you're very, very familiar with the project. Uh, as a result, I'm not going to take a long time here introducing uh, the project, and I think it's best just kind of to move into uh, to testimony from our witnesses. Uh, I have three witnesses um, this evening. Instead of doing an offer of proof, I'm going to have them come up and, and testify. We will move as quickly as we can, given the fact that you are very familiar with this project, but I do want to make sure uh, that we create a record for uh, this particular use. Um, I do, we have exhibits, which we're going to try to display electronically here for you. I do have uh, hard copies if anybody on the board would like um, a hard copy. I'm going to give a hard copy to Mr. Kilkenny for his file. Thank you. Those uh, exhibits are all pre-marked, and we'll kind of walk through them and mark them on the record for for clarity's sake, uh, moving forward. Um, one thing I would like to suggest is I have three witnesses again. Um, if the board's so inclined, perhaps I can go through uh, each witness one at a time, and then the board can go ahead and ask questions uh, that they may have, and we can have the appropriate person come up and answer that question. Of course, if you want to ask questions after each witness uh, testifies, you're more than happy to do that. We're willing to be flexible. I think it'd be fine. Uh and I'll ask the board if there's any objection. Go through the whole case, correct? Because some of our questions might get answered during the case. If That's somebody right. Somebody else. That's right. Understand? Okay. Fantastic. All right. So I guess I can have my three witnesses sworn in um, all at one time, and then I'll get started. I have uh, Mark Brennan from Federal Realty, Lindsey Braylinger from Boiler Engineering, and Eric Ostromchuk from TBD Traffic Planning and Design. Thanks, Great. Andy. Sure. So, Mark, why don't you just start off by stating your name for the record? Great. Mark Brennan with Federal Realty. Okay. In what capacity are you employed by Federal? I'm a Vice President of Regional Development for the Philadelphia and Baltimore region. Okay. And what we pre-marked as Exhibit A1, it's not on the screen here, but I did give a copy to uh, Mr. Kilkenny. Uh, those are the copies of the two deeds for the subject parcel, correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, the applicant for this conditional use is Federal Realty OPLP, which is actually a successor entity to Federal Realty Investment Trust, who is listed on the deed. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And then you're obviously familiar with this presentation here, and I think the board has uh, seen it a number of times, but could you go ahead and, and walk us through this presentation and, and where you can um, please reference the exhibit um, notations on the bottom. We have marked this concept plan package uh, A dash to uh, a th letter a through y i believe just to accommodate all the different pages in the presentation fantastic appreciate it uh thanks everyone for having us back again um for those of you are familiar with the site this is exhibit a dash to b the existing uh retail project uh, bounded by moreland road easton and park avenue we are currently in the process of running through a large-scale multi-year uh, repositioning um, 
for us, our biggest driving force to propose development in an area like this is connect connectivity between people, places, and vehicles. We're obviously in a, a transit-oriented location uh, to provide street-level vibrancy and a sense of place, and obviously, at the ultimately, a successful redevelopment for both the community, the tenants, and the developer. Uh, the project is broken. Sorry, this is A-2D. Uh, the project is broken into three phases. Phase one is nearly complete with the relocation of Marshalls, the grocery store, and Five Below. Phase two is currently under construction. It's an 18,000 square foot building across from the library on Park Avenue. Uh, that project will be complete in September of this year. And we're here tonight for phase three, which sits on five and a half acres and will include 261 residential units uh, with retail and uh, a parking structure. Some of the main focal points that we've talked about before right, is, is trying to activate this, the site on Easton Road. Currently, it's got its back and loading area uh, facing both Easton and Easton as you approach, approach York. Uh, we're opening up the site. Um, we're putting the proposed retail and residential building on park with street level entrances for townhouse type units. Uh, we're activating a north-south thoroughfare called Willow Grove Lane which will connect Park Avenue to Easton Road. And then we're also proposing an east-west uh, vehicular lane from Easton to Moreland. Uh, in addition, there are about a dozen open area spaces for uh, placemaking, outdoor seating, and gathering that, that total roughly 30,000 square feet. On A2F, this is the same uh, diagram you saw at our last uh, hearing where we put things in sort of context with other projects and uh, both in our community and in, in other projects. So the Willow Grove Shopping Center, we're having a 9,700 square foot plaza outside the mixed use building. Um, there's 183,000 square feet of, of retail on 13 acres. And in comparison to the King of Prussia, which was mentioned in our last hearing, uh, it's a 17,000 square foot plaza on 122 acres with almost 3,000 residential units and 400,000 square feet of medical space. Um, in comparison, you know, the basketball court is about 4,500 square feet and then a double tennis court is about 2,800. So it'll give you some perspective. On A2G, these are some of the smaller areas we have uh, sprinkled out the development, uh, both on Park Avenue and on Easton as well as outdoor seating and plaza areas uh, adjacent to the proposed retail H building on the corner of Easton and, and Easton. A2H, again, just sort of some perspectives. Our Barracks Road Shopping Center, uh, which we mentioned earlier, is 4,200 square foot plaza for almost a half a million square feet of retail. But you'll see it's active. There's a focal point. There's outdoor seating. And it's got, uh, you know, replete with landscaping and outdoor seating areas. Just an overview of the project again, it's 129,000 square feet of retail, 261 residential units with a 500 parking stall structured deck, as well as 542 surface spaces. <coughs> Building F is currently under construction. The new uh, access to Park Avenue across from the entrance to the library and the municipal building uh, is now complete and active. Um, building F will have both indoor and outdoor restaurant opportunities, as well as a small plaza on the Park Avenue corner of Willow Grove Lane and Park. It will sit adjacent to the entrance to the residential building in G, which will include uh, parallel parking spaces uh, on Park, pick up and drop off spaces on Willow Grove Lane, as well as entrances to the outdoor residential uh, units <coughs> from Park between Willow Grove Lane and Easton. This is building F. This building will be complete in September. And as you can see, it sits on the corner of Park and the new Willow Grove Lane with outdoor seating both on the upper level and then restaurant seating on the lower level. Again, this is the same building, the view looking towards the library. And on the mixed use building, it will be uh, residential above retail, uh, both on Willow Grove Lane and on Salix Drive. It will have retail in the building as well as standalone retail um, as Easton makes its uh, 
turn uh, back towards Moreland. Uh, it will have uh, surface parking and then a pedestrian plaza with seating and an interactive pedestrian green space. The townhouse units that will open up to park have little outdoor uh, seating areas as well as entrances directly to the sidewalk. Just an overview of the layout, residential along park, amenity space for the residential building at the corner of Willow Grove Lane and Park Avenue, retail as you head further into the project, and then retail on the corner of, uh, of Easton and Salix Drive. The voting for the building will be done on Salix. The residential units will enter the project directly from Park Avenue, and then there'll be retail parking in the garage uh, at the parking elevation of the surface parking, which will be dedicated for retail. And the, just for the record, that's A2O. I'm sorry. It's fine. A2P, this is the elevation, uh, the proposed renderings uh, facing the Willow Grove Shopping Center in front of the um, where we're sitting today. Uh, you can see the retail building F there in the background. And again, it's got street level, streetscape, uh, wide sidewalks, parallel parking for the residents in the community. And then each of these units will have entrances uh, to their building from park. They'll also be able to access the building from the parking garage through a service corridor. It's the same building looking the other way, standing at the intersection uh, for the new road and the exit from the library. And the entrance to the residential building is at the corner with the two height uh, brick feature. And that's A2Q. A2Q, apologize. A2R, this is the dimension study that we presented at the last meeting. The top of the parapet is 70 feet, two inches. Um, we set back, step back the building after the fourth story at 46 feet, six inches. And again, the entrance feature is about 28 feet tall. Uh, that'll be the main entrance to the residential building portion of the mixed use project. And Mark, this, that height um, that you just described complies with the height requirement in the zoning ordinance specific to Park Avenue, correct? Correct. Okay. Again, you'll see some of the features of uh, the placemaking and landscaping along Park. Uh, this will activate Park. Uh, at the last several meetings, we heard a lot about the activation of Park east of the project. And while we don't think retail was the best use for this, we came up with a compromise where we allowed the residential units to activate this location. So we feel that this pedestrian landscape and, uh, and access way between Easton and the retail uh, will certainly be active. An A2T, again, you'll see as you head plan right here, uh, this goes down into the retail portion of it, the residential entrance on uh, Park Avenue. And this is that plaza I referenced earlier um, at the main center of the project, right outdoor seating areas, uh, potentially a water feature, some focal point, which will be heavily landscaped and, and have opportunities for placemaking, both for the community and the uh, restaurants. And that's A2U, correct? Correct. Uh, and A2V, this is the view into the project uh, from Easton, uh, proposed restaurant space on the corner. You'll see one of the several opportunities we have for the garage. While nothing's final, we did talk about it's a key focal point to the community and we're gonna spend a lot of time making that treatment um, match the rest of the architecture in the building because we understand how important it is. So I'm sorry, one quick question. The rendering right before that, it doesn't show the garage right next. Yeah, so this is the this is the rendering. Just before you get going, it's A2U. A2U, yeah. so this is inside the project you're looking to the left back towards the municipal buildings and to the right back towards east and the garage sits on the other side of the building. Okay. So as you go to the next piece, the famous bistro would sit in the background of this. So as you go from Pescatora on A2V down Salix, then you'll hit that outdoor space. So can you go back to that to you again? Of course. Then there's supposed to be a big common area right there. Correct. Plaza this, area. Yeah, house. this whole thing is about 9,000 square feet, including the area where we'll activate and do activities on the on, on Salix Drive itself. I can go back to the calculation earlier well, on. Am I, look, am I looking at a rendering of the, the plaza area right now? Correct. And this is the same rendering we showed um, both at the CDC and the board for our 
uh, zoning text amendment. Is do I see some of that plaza area available for uh, the, the dining of that restaurant? Is that what I'm looking at? Possibly. While we don't have a tenant yet, yes, there will be an intermix of both pedestrian, non-restaurant tenants, but also outdoor seating potentially for the restaurant. Okay. And that design, sorry, will get uh, further developed as we get into land development. Uh, just a point of clarification, um, and you, you hinted on it, but I want to just strike it home. It's 9,000-ish square feet. Correct. Space, 5,500 square feet of that, correct, is dedicated public, with the other 4,000-ish is the street. Correct. That could be closed off for a public event. So it's not dedicated public space. I just want to double-check your numbers, but yes, 5,500 is curb in. Correct which will always be a permanent installment, and 4,200 for you know, events of any nature, right, where we sort of close that road temporarily for a farmer's market or a food truck event or any other of the enumerated events we could possibly do in a project of this size. Yes. So I think I made this point at some, at some other meeting in the we've past. Been, we've been here a lot. Anyway. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and I, I just think that that's a misdirection in quantification of public space and I my preference would be to remove that 4200 because if we're going to count street space as public space we could dedicate any portion of the street or parking lot anywhere on this parcel as public open space and it would just be a lie to the numbers um, so I would rather see the total calculation of open usable park space for that corner be 5500 not 97 that's good so point. how much of that 5,500 uh, would actually be available for retail dining? I don't know yet. That's, I don't. Not, that's not public space then. Uh, again, I don't know the exact count and how many seats our proposed restaurant would require. Um, in some projects, the outdoor dining would be sort of seasonal. So it's not a dedicated just to the restaurant. But again, we are you know, several steps away from having a tenant earmarked for that space to, to final, to make a final determination on uh, restaurant space versus open space. But from a developer's perspective, it will feel like one space, 50 to 100 square feet, with a mix of uses that is happening in that central location. So de facto, it, it will act like a 5,500 square foot open plaza. A portion of that will be people eating. Of an opportunity for questions later. Yeah. A2W, this is one of the proposed, um, but obviously not finalized, options to treat the garage along Easton. It's a nighttime view. And then in our early design thinking, we came up with some other options. Um, I think we heard comments about all of them last time. This is still TBD. We will obviously get through this in the land development process, but we do understand the importance of this garage as it does face Easton. Uh, so we're gonna spend plenty of time going through a meaningful treatment to manage this garage, which does face Easton. You know, uh, a couple of years ago, we were talking about uh, our fountain across the street. And we never got to building a fountain, and now we put a little picnic table there. Uh, but I remember some conversation about uh, you're, you folks building a fountain on the corner of Easton Road and, uh, and York Road there, you know, as a centerpiece to this, to this project. I don't know what happened to that conversation. But. We haven't gotten that far yet through the development. We did show a fountain type area on the 5,500 square foot. Uh, we do have an image that shows the project as you come in um, with that vantage point. I don't know exactly what that treescape area will look like, but we do show what we're proposing, decent concept, which I'll get to in the next. It just exhibit. reminds me, uh, back in the '60s, you would come down York Road, and it actually was an island in the in the middle of the street there. And that was kind of a, a center point. So I was hoping, you know, a fountain on that on that corner, which we never on our on our corner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think you would propose a little piece of land there, actually. Say that again. 
I think you had proposed a small uh, park or something on that corner. I yeah, think we're going to see that in a moment, right? Yeah, I'll, yeah. if you let okay. me get to the exhibit, okay. you'll see that vantage point and what we're sort of... I just want that to be forgotten. Got it. And then A2Y, again, this is just sort of the, the section drawing that identifies the, um, the heights of each floor, both on park and on the internal Salix Drive. And then I will show you... On the next then, then we'll mark as Exhibit A3 a document that Mark is going to pull up here in a moment. So this is the... It's a two-sheet document, so why don't you start with sheet one. Right, this is the existing view of our shopping center. Uh, from uh, the intersection at Memorial Park in Easton. And then this is what we're proposing. Right, so I think you'll notice a few things. One, we're obviously building a six-story residential building in the background. But I think more importantly, the view corridor into the site now is permanently changed. In the previous, in the current plan, the improvements, there is a wall from end to end, including the property which we don't own on the corner of Easton. Um, we are now going to open up the entire site with an active corner, primary, hopefully a restaurant with outdoor seating. Uh, we're showing a little Willow Grove uh, monument sign, similar to the ones on the other side of the street, and then outdoor dining, uh, a, res a retail only building in the foreground, and then the residential mixed use building uh, along park. I really appreciate this view. Thank you for providing it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean. I can see that fountain on the corner there. Uh, it's got good eyesight. Yeah. We haven't, again, uh, Commissioner, we, we haven't got that far, right? I understand. We, we have, these are sort of preliminary ideas of nice, what we're so. thinking. Um, we do understand how important that corner is. Um, so we're going to do our best in the architecture. And this was a, a very quick sketch up model, but it will match the architecture of the, of the existing building, uh, the new building F, and obviously it'll tie into the residential building. Mark, are you familiar with the design standards and the zoning ordinance that apply to this property? I am. Okay. And do you think that the packet you just described demonstrates compliance with those standards and it's in keeping with the intent of the town center district? I do, yes. Okay. And how about the streetscape and green area requirements? Are you familiar with those requirements? I am. And similarly, do you think that this design package uh, is consistent with those requirements and in keeping with the intent of the TC district and will be further developed as part of the land development process? Yes, I do. Okay. Those are all the questions that I have for Mr. Brennan. Um, I can ask Lindsay Braylinger to come up now. Lindsay, can you state your name for the record? Good evening. My name is Lindsay Braylinger, and I'm with Bowler Engineering. And you're a senior project manager with Bowler? Yes, I am. Okay, and you're familiar with this shopping center site, correct? Yes, correct. And you're familiar with the proposed redevelopment in this conditional use application? Yes, I am. Okay, and what's up on the screen is a site plan marked A4. Are you familiar with this plan? Yes, I am. Okay. Does this plan uh, depict the proposed redevelopment consistent, consistent with Mr. Brennan's uh, testimony with respect to the concept plan package? Yes, it is. Okay. And as part of uh, preparing this plan, did you put together a zoning uh, compliance uh, table which contains development standards? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you actually prepare an updated version of that uh, development standards uh, table since the submission of this plan? Yes, we did. Okay. And I want to mark that uh, exhibit as exhibit A6. Um, we're going to skip over A5 for the time being. Lindsay, are you able to toggle over to A6 on the screen? Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. And does this table uh, indicate that the proposed apartment building complies with the bulk <coughs> requirements uh, applicable to uh, this use? Yes, it okay. does. And can you briefly just highlight uh, the compliance for us uh, with reference to this table? Sure. Um, so I'll start at the, at the top of the minimum lot size. Um, as you can see, uh, 2,500 square feet, and we are compliant with that. Um, the second is the minimum lot width. Again, it's 25 feet, which we are greater than. <coughs> 
Um, the build to uh, and the build to lines we are also compliant with in the zoning chart. Uh, the side yard setback there are no side yard setbacks and we are compliant with that as well. Um, min maximum impervious coverage is at 90% and we are at 90% currently, which is a reduction from, we're increasing um, pervious area with this development, which you guys all saw in uh, Mark's, t uh, Mark's presentation. Um, and then as I go down through the chart, with the next couple requirements, um, we provided, what we did was we updated the chart to provide additional information on how we get to the final product. So in, in these next few um, requirements, there is an underlying uh, requirement in the town center district, which then we are using the <coughs> bonus provisions for the conditional use, which, um, and then there's also an amendment from the text amendment. So this, this, this discussion in the, the requirement section, it, it basically shows you the, the train to get to the end result. So I'll go through that. Um, for the building height um, throughout the, the text amendment and from the bonus provisions, we're allowed 85 feet, <coughs> except for on Park Avenue, which is 72 feet. And as you just saw from the prior uh, testimony that we are compliant with that. Um, the next one is regarding the building step back. Um, as we are 800 and we are the lot the lot width along Easton Road is greater than 850 feet so we're actually exempt from the step back requirement the next one is regarding the maximum building footprint for non-residential buildings um, and again there's a requirement in the underlying TC district which then there's a bonus provision with the conditional use um, which then leaves you with 155,000 square foot uh, footprint, which we are currently at 90,000. Uh, it would be 93,010 93, square feet total. The next, uh, the final requirement is regarding the, the minimum first floor use blend. Um, Within this requirement, there's two main sections. The first one is regarding the um, amenity retail office fl first floor must be greater than 25%. Currently, currently we are at 44%. The second requirement is regarding that non-residential uses of the retail amenity office must, the office amenity use must be less than 30%. Currently, we're at 29.9%. And these numbers differ slightly from what was in the concept package because these are the most recent numbers that we have as of earlier today, actually. They're updated. That's correct. Okay. And um, if you go back to the, to the plan, you also put a parking calculation table on that plan, Lindsay, correct? Yes. Okay. And can you just... Uh, you got it? Yeah, let me zoom in here. Yes. Great. Right. And Mark already gave us the numbers, but this parking table demonstrates compliance with the township's parking requirement, correct? That's correct. It goes through each space, each use, um, and demonstrates per your ordinance in the town center district um, the required number of parking um, and then what we are providing. And the township engineer issued a review letter on this plan, is that correct? That's correct. And I think it's been marked as T4, but you're familiar with that letter. Is that right? Yes, I am. Okay. And the letter contained um, a comment with respect to whether or not a list of potential waivers from the subdivision and land development ordinance has been identified. Actually, I think you used the term significant waivers. Has that been done yet? So we have not. We have not gone through the final, a, any final design for the land development yet. So the waivers are currently unknown at this time. Okay, but one will, be, a waiver list will be developed as this project goes to engineering and is ultimately submitted to the township for consideration. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. You're talking about Gilmore's letter from June 1st? Yes. What specific area were you just referencing? Comment number eight indicated, I, yeah. I'll see if 
see if I can reference the letter for you for this next question as well. Oh, it's the same comment, number eight. Uh, asks whether or not the uh, applicant intends to submit stormwater management and landscape design plans uh, in accordance with the requirements of the Saldo and the stormwater management ordinance. And the applicant does intend to do that, correct? Yes, that's correct. As well as a lighting, a detailed lighting plan? Yes, correct. Okay. And then with regard to the other comments in the letter um, generally, do you have any concerns with the ability uh, to address those comments uh, with the township as part of the land development submission? I do not. Okay. Um, I can have uh, my last witness come up. Of course. Sure. Uh, you, uh, you mentioned that there were no side yard setbacks. Correct. So can we go back to uh, just higher up on that particular, where we have the, the current bank or the, uh, the former bank and medical center? Mm -hmm. Why is that not a side yard setback? So there, there is no requirement for it um, in the actual code, but we are providing, I believe it was 6.2 feet from that at the closest point. I just wanted uh, an understanding that you, there is a- Yes, you're a, correct. A setback, mm -hmm. but it's not required. There's a side yard. Yes. Thank you for that clarification. So people already started asking questions, so I might as well just ask a question. <laughs> sure. Um, we didn't go by what we were saying. Yeah, no, well, nobody no, follows the direction. So it's no, it wasn't. We said it. Oh, all right. You know, <laughs> get her back up. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you, you, Lindsay, provided the parking calculations, correct? Correct. Okay. So the required parking for the lot, the parcel, is 594 spaces. Um, why do we have an excess of 425 spaces for this entire site? So this chart does not include, it includes that we have an excess for employees. Um, so that, that's the additional parking would be designated to employees um, that, we, that we're over. I should probably know the answer to this question, but our ordinance designates parking for employees as a separate calculation. So I, it's one parking space per employee. Per employee, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a TBD there because we haven't identified tenants, so we don't know quantification of employees. Correct. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, my concern for that, right, is we have 425 parking spaces that are unidentified. The quantity is pr of employees is probably not going to hit 425 employees, I would assume. And so my, my preference would be to give that space back in some capacity to the town center concept um, in the form of another green space or some other type of, of uh, amenity space within the facility. Um, like a family. Yeah. <laughs> Look, he's all excited about giving parking spaces back. Just stop, right? <laughs> from, a, I, yeah, so from a practical perspective, uh, if we were to give back parking spaces because we didn't think the demand was there, it will likely come from the garage. Uh, and the reason I say that is because if we get rid of surface parking in close proximity to the retail, those retailers may not succeed because their customer has to traverse the project and go into the garage. So if you look at building B, for example, right, there's 75 spaces. I can scroll down a little bit, I think, if I can. All right, for a 5,300 square foot retail building. Mm -hmm. And that retailer, whoever it may be, likely a restaurant, will want and require parking in close proximity, surface lot, to be able to walk to that location. Um, the excess parking is primarily stacked in the garage right now. Because if you look at where Marshall's, they have control areas and requirements for their parking, mm -hmm. as does the grocer and the new tenants in building F. Right. So the 389 on this side, coupled with the 75, um, are going to be used by the existing ground floor retail, uh, separate from the mixed use building. So while I would love to not build a layer of structured parking, um, that's where you'd be giving it up, not on the surface lots. 
unfortunately. So I'm torn as to which I prefer, right? Because uh, I would love another green space. I yeah. would love for that building to get shorter, especially that garage, uh, that prominent face that you have designated as a very important garage multiple times. Um, I, I think we need to evaluate that. I, I really do. Um, so I was going to wait, uh, but we're, we're in it. So, um, so you know, wait, it, are you going on to something else? No, it's still about this part. Okay. Yeah. Um, Anthony. Yeah. Could you give some consideration to uh, not doing anything with the parking to see if they need it or not? Yeah, definitely. And if, if they find out that they can give 200 space or some space elsewhere, they can make it. Well, let, let, yeah, and, and your point's taken, right? So my entire thought here, and if we go back to that rendering that I said that I appreciated uh, a lot, um, was that A2? Would you like me to go back? A2. Or whatever it was. V. Yeah, that one. So. Uh, What's the identifier for I'd the record? I'd say A3, C2. A3, C2. Right. Okay. So we talked about this very important garage. Uh, and the facade of it that faces Easton Road. How that we're gonna we're gonna jazz that up and make it a focal point of this facility. Um, when we're looking at this this rendering, we see a garage that's six stories tall, and then we see a sea of parking that brings you through the entirety of this site. On the left side of the potential restaurant space. Um, in my opinion, right, we, we, we requested for an activation along Easton. Um, we've talked about that since day one. We're starting to do that. And I think that we're losing the message a lot. And this rendering really tells that story because we have created more view corridors and more activation on this site that is designated towards parking and service than we have to the actual facility that you're, that you're creating. Um, this rendering shows it very clearly. I mean, you've got to see a parking on the left, you've got a six story tall garage on the right. And then if we were to pan left on this screen, you would then see a, a service access area for the four tenants that are on the corner of East. Correct. Um, I don't understand how that really activates the town center in a way that we discussed and, and um, frankly, we're promised throughout this process. Um, and I see an excess of 425 parking spaces as being a way to potentially create some other type of zone along Easton Road in the buffer between your Marshall's building and your retail space um, as either another green space there or, uh, dare I say it, uh, another building that faces Easton that creates <coughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. what I mean. <laughs> no, 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 I know. I know. The, the, the point being, right, we are so heavily focused on parking here. Yeah. This whole thing revolves around parking in the inside of this space, this, this parcel. And this table and that rendering are proving the point even more. Um, and, you know, I've been, I think I've been hammering the same points as saying, I'm not really saying anything new here. This rendering is just bringing up other points that really clearly states this. And I'm thankful for this, and I really wish that this was provided to us when I originally asked for it last time, because this shows the giant height of this building as a standalone obelisk in the middle of town. It shows seas of parking. It shows a garage as an artistic focal point, and I don't think that it hits any of the messages that we were aiming for for this project. Um, so with that, I'll get off my soapbox. I, rec I, I highly request that we look at these parking numbers. Um, and we come back to this and try to figure out how we get the quantity that's required for this space and then give back to the community instead of uh, with something useful instead of parking that's unnecessary. I want to throw two cents in. Mm -hmm. um, nothing's going to torpedo a restaurant if it doesn't have parking. And I don't know if that's going to be enough parking that you have there for if that's a, if that's a high volume restaurant. Um, but you go off over to King of Prussia, first exit, I think it's 363, you go straight ahead. There's no parking with all those restaurants. You have to spend 20 minutes looking for a parking spot in King of Prussia. Uh, right as soon, if you, as soon as you go, come off through the toll booth, the first exit, 
and go right across the 363 and right into, I forget what it's called. Um, so, but I'm just saying that parking's needed for anything to be successful. If you don't have the parking, it's not gonna be successful. My recommendation is not to reduce parking quantities to the point where this property is unusable. My point is to get the parking quantities accurate for the use. Don't exceed it to the point where we're exceeding parking just because it's good to have more parking. Give it back to some kind of program space. Well, like, uh, I, you know, you've got lots of square footage on this property. Yeah, I agree. This was my two cents. Yeah, no, I agree with you, right? But uh, the focal point of our town center should not be how much parking we can give our residents. Me, um, sorry, co co commissioners, and <laughs> this this is is great. Uh, perhaps if there are, are comments on that strain of that witness, that's fine. If not, maybe we let Mr. Freemuth finish his case and then uh, go more into uh, you know questions you have of witnesses. With commentary, perhaps uh, move it along. Take the hint. Okay. I apologize. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. No. That's all I have for Lindsay. Just one more witness. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody wants to look at charts and tables. I do. Oh, do you? <laughs> we can get into it if you I like. I love them. They're great. All right. Well, Eric, while, while, we're, uh, while you're getting that set up, why don't you just introduce your, yourself? Though? Yeah, good evening. Eric Ostom Chuck, uh, Vice President of Transportation Planning at uh, Traffic Planning and Design. And, and TPD prepared a traffic impact assessment for this project, correct? We did. And that was uh, submitted to the township? Yes, that was submitted to the town, both the township and PennDOT. And um, that's been marked as A5 in the exhibit packet, and hopefully we can get it up here on the screen if you, if you need oh, it. I, yeah, if I need it, need to, we can. But okay, well, we can leave it as is for right yeah. now. Um, why don't you take? A, and by the way, just for the record, exhibit A5 is uh, a copy of the assessment without out the exhibits. We didn't reproduce the entire um, copy, but we obviously could provide one if we needed to. And I sure. think the township has a copy. But thank you very much. Sure. Um, can you just take a moment just to discuss the, uh, the conclusions of the assessment and then highlight the, the recommended improvements in the assessment? Certainly. Uh, so with regard to A5, uh, we completed the traffic study uh, consistent with PennDOT TIS methodology, uh, whereas we uh, develop a scope with input from PennDOT and your township traffic engineer and uh, conduct uh, the traffic study. Uh, in this case, we evaluated nine off-site intersections surrounding the site. Um, you know, just to, a quick summary on with regard to, you know, the types of uses we're talking about with regard to retail and apartment and the mixed use nature is, uh, you know, we really get the benefit of interaction with regard to people who live and then either work or play at the same location. So you get that benefit of the interaction and, and therefore uh, less what I'll call off-site traffic impact. Uh, so in evaluating the, those off-site intersections, we found that um, they are consistent with uh, PennDOT operational standards. Uh, I will say that we did receive, and uh, Andy will probably get into it, but we did receive a, a review letter from your township traffic engineer. Um, and in that, uh, he noted that there are um, some tweaks that we might be able to make on the surrounding roadways to, uh, you know, with regard to signal timings, uh, providing additional stacking distances. Uh, and certainly as we move through PennDOT and the township land development application, we'll do that. Uh, really a lot of the focus on the traffic study uh, comes down to access. You know, we have an existing site, existing retail site, change in use. Um, but with regard to the access, that's really where um, Pardon my pun, the rubber meets the road. <laughs> uh, so, you know, A4, I wanted to leave A4 on the screen because a lot of the discussion, I think, is going to focus on, on the access points and, you know, how this operates and how people get into and out of the center. Uh, so if you'll see on A4, plan left, uh, there's the existing right-in driveway, 
and a right in right out driveway uh, down near the grocer. Uh, those are proposed to remain. Uh, there's a new access point that's proposed to uh, 611 on the planned right side, which is a right in uh, access only that's proposed. Um, plan bottom, plan south, uh, new access points proposed to Easton Road there. And that's the one that will connect up to the newly constructed access um, at Park Avenue, right, right across the street. Um, so, you know, again, you know, I know previous testimony talked about, you know, how the backs of the buildings kind of back up to Eastern Road today and opening that up uh, provides a lot of connectivity. Um, you know, we have the, essentially uh, bifurcating the site in two directions, north and south. Um, so as part of that, a lot of the focus um, comes down to Easton Road on the south and, and Park Avenue on the north. Uh, so with regard to Easton Road, uh, what we can do along there is provide um, a stripe for an additional lane between the two signalized intersections. Currently there are uh, turn lanes at uh, 611 and uh, back at 63. Uh, we can connect those through a center left turn lane along that section uh, that does a couple things it provides uh, safe uh, left turn access from Easton Road into the site but also it doesn't provide you know what exists out there today which are 20 foot or so lanes in each direction so reducing the lane kind of helps to calm the traffic along Easton Road and provides uh, that that lane for for entering the site so that's uh, proposed as part of uh, the package for Easton Road uh, Park Avenue um, there was a uh, discussion point in the McMahon letter with regard to that roadway and certainly I heard earlier about the uh, municipal complex that you guys are uh, looking to campus uh, do here and certainly the connectivity up there so we're looking at some calming measures along Park Avenue on street parking bump outs that type of thing uh, a large focus that we'll have through land development is the intersection uh, at Park Avenue with the municipal access on the north side uh, indicated on A4 by those dark lines at the top which are essentially pedestrian crossings uh, so one of the focus points of the study moving forward as we do our revisions will be how that operates what kind of treatment we would have if it would be an always stop control uh, that would help to cross ped pedestrians along uh, Park Avenue also you know, cancel our lead uh, acts as a calming measure along there again trying to um, reduce speeds we want to you know increase the visibility for pedestrians provide them safe and adequate uh, means to, to travel the roadways and you know you can do that through that calming measures um, so we'll, we'll be doing that as we as we move along Let's see if I have any and you, you mentioned you've seen the review letter there was a comment from McMahon about uh, traffic calming and that's something that is going to continue to be evaluated Yes, and you know, and I've reviewed the, the McMahon letter dated June 2nd. Um, I didn't see anything in there that um, was insurmountable. Uh, certainly I'll be working uh, with McMahon through land development. PennDOT will have their say. The county will you know, weigh in as well, uh, take all their comments into consideration and, and you know, move forward with a appropriate design. Do you believe that some of the improvements that are recommended in your assessment, coupled with the ability to address the McMahon comments, are going to provide appropriate improvements in order to address the anticipated traffic from this development yes and you touched on this um, a, a little bit but obviously this is a pedestrian oriented development correct certainly and then there's also vehicular traffic associated with the use do you have any concerns about the ability to uh, adequately address the internet interaction between pedestrians and motorists on this site no, I, in fact, I think it, it, it's probably the main focus of our study moving forward. Okay. Those are all the questions that I have for Eric. That's all the witnesses that I have. So uh, if there are additional questions, we're happy to um, address them. Yeah, I have one additional question. We have a large plot of land in the center of town that has been vacant for over a year or so. And it was supposed to be an Amazon supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> What is the story on that, and what's going to happen? I don't know that I know anything about that, frankly. <laughs> I don't think it's part of the conditional use. But I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's that it's... Very interesting I don't, comment. Correct. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for your last witness. Sure. Here. 
So we we had a, a big discussion here and emphasis on traffic calming mm -hmm. and pedestrian crossings as a tool for that. What's going on in Eastern Road? Is that going to be a signalized intersection? Uh, it's not proposed to be at this point, no. Uh, we would pr uh, provide the center left turn lane. Uh, you know, there are certain warrants you have to meet with regard to PennDOT in order to install a traffic signal, mainly oh, traffic but, volume. But there, there is a, a plaza area proposed. At the, is that building D? I don't know if I can. Check the marshals. I'll see if I can zoom in here. I believe it's building D. The guy behind it, I'll tell you for sure. Are you referring to the building on the right corner? Yeah, that's that, that's that, here. That's right. That's so there's a small plaza area proposed along Eastern Road, right, right there. Here. That's correct. So why not pedestrian crossing there? Uh, Traffic calming. I mean, plaza can, area. Right. Entrance to a building. I mean, we can certainly look at it. That would be likely uh construed by PennDOT as a mid-block crossing it's not a PennDOT roadway but it's well i mean sorry uh PennDOT standard though I, right. I appreciate that uh, uh you, you just alluded to you know we could do a signalized pedestrian crossing there's a traffic coming uh you know again we can look at the, if the traffic signal warrants are satisfied there and not the traffic signal oh signalized pedestrian crossing. oh, oh, oh. i misunderstood yeah and certainly if that's something we, we want to look at we can certainly take a look at that Well, uh, uh, Commissioner Spearing and, and uh, uh, Commissioner Whiting, I know Commissioner Whiting asked a question, and if federal didn't feel like it was appropriate to answer that, I know it's been a matter of concern for many residents. It's come up. If they had any information, perhaps that could be appreciated. Sure. I can only say what has been yeah, made, yeah, no, made I'm, public, right? Yeah. We have a signed lease with a grocery store um they have an obligation to open and and i believe that they will do so uh no, there's been patch articles and stuff like that related to it. correct yeah. uh and timing is tbd uh unfortunately i can't say anything no. well <laughs> you remember the will tree panels that are supposed to be on the on that building i do uh, they're up they're up they are they're up and they're lit and, and they look lit. beautiful yeah. they've it's been up for so by tonight i just saw the uh <laughs> no yeah, all the lit. corrugated they're metal lit. bolt on um, the, they're up. Um, all the hardscapes in, the landscapings in, and they're I believe they're lit now. On, we, on Easton Road, is it or on? Moreland? It's on Easton and Moreland. Okay. Yeah, the whole corner was lit. Yeah. We got one letter that was out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to call my electrician on that one. <laughs> hey, Sean. Uh, I really appreciate you bringing that back up to the floor, because I was in the um, up in Warrington at this store that was supposed to be occupied in Will Grove. And the manager down there says that, that the store is not going to be opening. He stated with authority, that store is not going to open. Now, you know, it's, it's the people, the community folks here see this thing being built. It's been up empty for almost a year and a half and nothing's being done. Now, you're telling me that no one knows what is happening there at all? We, we read about it in different community newspapers, but something should be said before we go out and build a towering apartment complex or add any additional buildings to that until we find out what's happening with this one that's been vacant from us a year. I think it's a legal issue since it's in the courts. And that's why okay. they're not willing yeah. to say anything because it's yeah. a court case. And I, 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 <laughs> he, he's going as far as he yeah. believes he can go without jeopardizing. Um, I believe that's yes. accurate. I think point, there's ongoing. Uh, it's in the newspapers. There's a court case going back and forth about opening and stuff. So that's why I'm sure. And, and, uh, and just for the record, Mr. Uh, Whiting, uh, your manager also prodded me to raise that question again. He sent me a text and said, we follow up on that. So I just wanted to give him <laughs> proper credit. So that's good. Okay, thank you. Exactly. Um, I also wanted to mention uh, Anton Kuhner, our engineer, is here. There were a few questions I know that some of you might have had, and he's in the, in the back. Yeah, I, I have a question for you, Anton. Um, okay. 
Um, so it, will he be? So he be testify? I don't know. You tell me. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we? Gonna, why don't he's going to have to. Why don't we he's going to answer a question. Yeah. Why don't we yeah. swear him in? <laughs> Anton Kuhner, A N T O N K U H N E R. And what's your position with the township? Uh, township traffic engineer. Okay, and for McMahon, right? For McMahon. Okay, great. Excellent. Um, thank you for your report. Appreciate it, as always. Um, there were questions number four and five, or comments number four and five on your report um, that hinted at the fact that the traffic impact study scope. Um, for this report may not have been complete because there were two missing intersections and uh, one ongoing neighboring development that would have significant impact on this site uh, that were not taken into account for the, the research. Um, do you, in your opinion, do you think that this feedback um, is substantially complete to be able to make uh, a determination? Was that the June twenty, June second, twenty twenty three letter. Or uh, June second, twenty twenty two letter. It's uh, June second. June second. Yes, yeah, June second. Okay. June second. There's I'm, one I'm that's like June second, twenty twenty two, and one. 20. No, this is twenty twenty three. I'm looking. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I don't know what your report is dated, but I'm looking at the traffic planning design review comments. Yes, that was uh, responses. That, that, that was from May twenty second to the scoping review back last June and that has been incorporated in what was submitted recently by the applicants engineer okay so this report from you Eric from May 22nd 2023 mm -hmm. that says that uh, in response to questions four and five that you will comply are the numbers that we're reviewing Yes, if you're Ruth. looking at the response from May 22nd, 2023, that was a response to the scope evaluation that McMahon completed. Right. Um, there is also a May 22nd, 2023 letter responding to the PennDOT scoping Correct. document, and our traffic study is dated the same date. So they were all submitted together. So all of the comments in those previous letters were addressed in the revised traffic study that was submitted May 22nd, 2023 reviewed by McMahon and that's the recent letter that we received June 2nd. Okay, so so what we're missing I guess is from you and <coughs> that is a revised report. Be, I guess because what I'm confused with is Eric's responses to those questions is will comply, but we don't I don't know that what I'm reading that's finalized is actually complying or if it's a statement that the future submission will comply. No. So let me just yeah. go back a step. Please the do. response letter that TPD provided on May 22nd, 2023 was in response to the June 2nd, 2022 scoping letter. Right. So their submission in May of this year incorporated the comments from our June 2022 letter. And that those comments four and five regarding the two additional intersections, comment four, and the, well, the what's happening in the Bullet Grove Park Mall were incorporated in the traffic impact study that was submitted and was reviewed by us in, in our letter on June 2nd, 2023. Okay, all right, so that will comply, should really say, what we've submitted has complied. Okay, all right, good. So that, okay, that's helpful. So I, I had a question. <clears throat> I wanted to ask the uh, applicant traffic engineer to address the McMahon number 10, where he talks about uh, the projected queues. It just looks like right. every intersection is going to affect. So that, just for the record, you say which letter we're on. Just yes, uh, I believe you're referring to the June 2nd, 2023 McMahon letter, Correct. which was a review of the traffic impact study. And that was the comment that I alluded to that... Um, if you notice at the end of comment 10, the applicant's engineer should evaluate whether there are feasible improvements that would reduce queue lengths at these intersections during the peak hours. And that's what we'll be addressing as we move through land development with PennDOT. When, when we receive PennDOT's letter, they'll have a, a host of comments that we need to address. And you know our evaluation of, of the use, so to speak, is not necessarily that the impact is due to the use or due to the development, but there, there may be opportunities 
as we're moving through, we can identify improvements that would help the queues for the general public, right. motoring public. <clears throat> it does, it is very concerning though. I mean, there's a lot of density added here and every intersection has a problem with the queues and I, I just think it's too much density to add to the neighboring properties in our community in the downtown. Um, I don't know, Anton, do you have anything to add to that or help with that? Uh, like as Eric said, it's some that we'll um, look through and look for opportunities for improvements at those intersections, whether it's traffic signal improvements, timing changes, or if there's roadway improvements that can be done to, you know, reduce those queues. Or we're just noting that, you know, there is a lot of traffic out there today. Yeah. But these are queues that can see what we can incorporate as part of the project. Right. Well, Park Avenue won't get any wider. I don't know that any of the other roads right. will get any wider. Yeah. Um, um, I have a much more concern with the density. Was there, when you studied this, is it, is it calling for a traffic signal at Park Avenue and Willow, the new road? No, it's currently not. Um, we did evaluate the, the traffic signal warrants there. They're not satisfied. But in the McMahon letter, they asked that we further evaluate it for an always stop condition, which we're, we're happy to do, um, which again, like I noted, would act as a calming measure, but also to help traffic uh, enter and exit both the municipal side and the development side. So this is a follow up to Commissioner Lockhart's comment. So the, the, the total numbers of cars coming out of that intersection, even if you combine the two intersections that have been closed in, into one, what is estimated to be the increase with all the density that's being considered? What's the increase in traffic volume at that intersection at Park Avenue and Willow? I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot, but it's got, I mean, is it roughly speaking, is it twice, is it three times? He's got the exact number. Okay. He has the exhibit materials to the report. I'm just thinking while you're looking for, I'm thinking about some of the Christmas time shopping. I'm thinking about summertime shopping. I mean, those, those get pretty heavy. Yeah, I, I just um, the issue I'm having, but with the counts that we did were before that driveway was constructed as it is currently. So I'm trying to see if I can provide you an answer. Um, what I can tell you is let's speak in just terms of, I don't want to talk about the morning like a Saturday coming out of there. So in an hour's time, this is very small, apologies. For instance, on a Saturday, midday on a Saturday, let's say you would have approximately 260 vehicles coming out of that driveway opposite the municipal complex in an hour's time. So spread out over that hour. Um, entering would be similar fashion a little uh, 300 or so coming from both directions. Um, with regard to the comment about the, the Christmas shopping. Um, and in the morning and afternoon when people are coming and right. going. And, and so, you know, just in uh, general terms, when you perform traffic studies, what they, the, the rule of thumb, so to speak, is you study the 30th highest hour in a year, meaning you don't typically design shopping centers for Black Friday. Or, you know, you know, something like that. So, you know, we look at typical operations on a Saturday or, a, you know, weekday um, rush hour. Uh, so the counts that we did were done uh, in middle of the week on, in April, um, which, you know, school's in session and it's just typical operations. Yeah. Are you comfortable with that, Anton? That not calling for a traffic signal or any other kinds of uh, measures to relieve some of that traffic? Yeah, it's, I think it's something we want to look at more. I think maybe which one's more appropriate, the traffic signal or an all four-way stop, stop. You know, yeah. considering pedestrians is yeah. in addition to vehicles. It doesn't go anywhere. I, I think we're committed to looking at that further, I think is what the testimony was. So. Uh, talk to me about what I said earlier about the signalization at uh, Easton Road. For a pedestrian right. crossing there. Yeah. I mean, something can be evaluated. I would think it would be more likely on the northern side of the intersection just to not conflict with left turn movements into that driveway as opposed to in front of the plaza space, the crossing. 
Uh, I'll just add as well, because it's an electrical device, we would have the PennDOT approval, so as I'm coordinating with Anton and his firm, we'll do the same with PennDOT on that uh, operation. <coughs> Um, Sean, yes. this is on our agenda later for approval as a conditional use. Mm -hmm. What exactly can we uh, nail down? So I, so I would suggest a couple things. In the close of this hearing, right, you have 45 days to issue a decision, right? It sounds like there's been a lot of uh, talk here this evening and, and debate. So if uh, what what the Board of Commissioners can do is uh, if they were interested in granting an approval, they can place reasonable conditions on that approval, um, you know, request. Uh, what would happen is, is if you had conditions uh, that were of interest to the Board of Commissioners, and we can deliberate. This is, this is akin to a zoning hearing. You could go in the back. We could talk about it. You could give my office direction as to some conditions you'd like placed. We can draft a, you know, a proposed, uh, you know, written decision that you would ratify publicly. You don't necessarily need, you can make a decision tonight. You don't need to make a decision or flush out all the conditions tonight. It's up to you, right? Uh, and what I would do is, um, if you had conditions that the board was interested in, I would communicate with Mr. Freemuth uh, about those conditions see if they were uh, amenable to the applicant. Um, and that is something that is done in conditional use applications uh, in other townships here and everything like that. And that is something the board is interested in. Okay, before yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's correct. Accurately yeah, stated. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Before we get to that, uh, I can't But there has to be public. Uh, no, I, 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 uh, I'm not thinking we're beyond that. <laughs> exactly. One of the questions, I went through this and I can't find it right now. Was there anything in this conditional use at all for a drive through So no. we are not waiving a, we're not giving you anything for a drive through Correct. There is no drive through in the current plan and we're not asking for it as a conditional use. I thought I saw with the, if the board would agree. I think there was a comment that maybe just stated that there was no drive through. I think that was the comment maybe in the Gilmore letter. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that one is cleared up then. <laughs> Go one down. Unless, of course, you want to drive through. <laughs> <laughs> then we want 300 parking spots only. Yeah. Uh, and the other question, I guess, would be for Mark uh, you do do all these shopping centers all over the place. Do you feel you have? Adequate parking? Do you feel you're overparked? <laughs> Most people don't want to build overparked in either. Uh, as far as for retail, since you're the professional in retail, uh, is that what do you feel that this is? I think if you go back and look at the numbers, and Neil and I were just uh, talking about it um, in between um, the expert witnesses, we're probably slightly overparked. Right. I don't think it's on retail, right? So if you look at the 261 units, um, we parked them at 1.5, right? Uh, so that rough numbers get to about 400 parking stalls. Uh, those stalls are going to be secure, dedicated, keyed entry that will not be um, utilized by any of the retail. So that really just leaves the one tray of parking, which was overflow, right? I think it's 75 or 80 spaces on grade. Uh, outside of the 80 the 75 surface spaces um, a portion of that will likely be for um, employee parking as well as some in the surface so could we eliminate 50 spaces perhaps yes but the way the garage is designed um, it would have to come from that lower level uh, and then if we were to fill it in right so if we were to if we were to eliminate that parking tray oh, oh wrong button it would be this surface level parking that is a part of the garage, right? The garage is designed in a way that you really can't shrink or change the size and dimensions for the way it functions. Um, and we don't want to lose residential units by making the building any smaller. So in theory, if we were to eliminate parking, it would come from the garage 
and not the surface, which I think is appropriately parked for how much retail we have. Um, and then I said you'd fill in some small retail uh, along Salix Drive. But it would not come from surface parking, which uh, services primarily the existing and proposed retail. I think the retail is appropriately parked. Uh, the access is likely from the garage. And, and again, we could continue to look at that. Yeah. Um, the 1.5, right, is for the units. There are guests, there are visitors, there are people looking at units that also want to park in close proximity to the building. So there's a lot happening in these mixed use projects. Um, generally, we don't want to over park anything because it costs money to build and it, it takes up, you know, dollars and capital. And so I don't think it's excessively over parked. But there's a way to potentially look at it in the future to lose a portion of the uh, first level for parking. Okay. Uh, that, that was just, I just wanted to get your opinion since yep. this is what you do and you want to make money and we want it to be successful. So uh, that yeah, question. You don't, you, on, on the retail and the residence side, you, you don't want to not have enough parking. Right? I, I know it sounds sort of obvious, but if the residents cannot park, right, if we start commingling and during peak hours the residents don't have dedicated spaces, the unit rentals and the people that are coming here to rent will not be happy, right? So like you need to provide enough parking, which is 1.5, 400 so spaces, dedicated in a safe, secure manner for the residents. And you think that 1.5 is enough? Yes. Because it, hmm. I mean, it seems like a lot of them will have two cars. <laughs> Yeah, you never know. That's uh, why we said one seven, one point seven. Yeah, right. that's big, right. Parking. I knew you had it's mentioned that earlier today. Bigger. Well, then we'd be uh, adding parking. So we're having two different conversations right. here. <laughs> okay, with that, uh, the only the other part, I do just want to say, uh, Anthony had mentioned being able to walk up, uh, or when you're at the Burger King corner, and look in and see a a lot of cars. I just wanted to state that is the one thing for three or four years we fought with them to make that open so we could see in. Correct. Uh, that was the number one uh, concern. I, I don't think that was Anthony's point at all. But see in, but with a f nice area first, yeah. kind of, even and if again, you see cars too. There is landscaping to be added, islands to be added, placemaking to be added, hardscape to be added. Like We're not engineered yet, right? So the view from Easton and the Burger King lot will certainly include parking, right? Because we have an existing shopping center that needs to be surface parked. And then the retail building, which we just described, will also be parked. But we understand that that corner has to be designed well with landscape and hardscaping and amenity space. We understand. But we have th the goal, I think, from the beginning was open up the center, right? Put the residential building along park. So that's how we ended up here today. Okay, the last, not a question. I thought all the trees along the streets were supposed to be lit. Um, um, where are we, I'm sorry, what? Along the street where? frontage. Those, none of those trees are lit. Oh, okay. the existing ones on Moreland and Easton? Is that what yes. it is? I don't know. I wasn't here during that land development. I hate to punt, and you okay. said it wasn't a question, so. Yeah, it's, it, it's not. It wasn't done, and it was told us that we, it would be done. That's all. Okay. So I just want to ask one more parking question. Um, how many parking spaces were in the the development before you guys started, and how many are proposed after you're done? I don't. That, have... I just want to say that parking lot is during the holidays is jammed. You can't yeah. get in in or out. It's very uh, very popular. And it's not going to get less popular. So. I'd have to go back and double check because I don't have it in front of me. Um, but we're parking, we believe, right, in our expertise, that we're parking the surface parking to a requirement that meets the existing and proposed first floor retail use. Um, and then the residential will be solely parked by itself. So we're, don't worry, we're, we're decreasing uh, the retail you know, from the current condition. Um, and the Grocer and Amazon, I'm sorry, the Grocer and the Marshalls lot is parked at whatever, five per thousand, right? To, to, sorry, that was funny. To manage that surface lot. The balance of it is going to be parking for uh, the residential. 
Well, are you asking uh, for more parking? I'm, I'm just trying no, to I'm see. No, uh, I'm just asking uh, if, if what you're proposing for surface parking is less than <coughs> was there originally, how can it not be a problem? Because it's a problem now. There's less retail. There's, There's less, less retail. retail. Less retail. Yeah. Again, I, I will double check the okay. calculation. Okay, but, I'm just, yeah. just curious. But just a quick summary, less density slash square footage means less parking and less traffic. And I think that's important. Okay, from everybody up here has had something to say? Well, I have one other item. <laughs> we talked about the plaza area, building D. We were proposing a uh, pedestrian crossing on Eastern Road. Uh, we also had extensive conversations about the plaza side of that building that faces Eastern Road, it has some kind of face on it, possibly an entrance or windows, so that we don't, we get away from the introduction part of your presentation that talked about the extended wall. So uh, we, we had some extent. Go ahead, Mark. I think it's at the intersection of Easton and Willow, correct? Correct. He's talking about. Yeah, we have yeah, retail, a. retail A here. Yeah. Building uh, D. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the goal for this space, right, hasn't been designed, nor do we have a user in mind, but there will have to be some loading on Easton because we need to load all of our retail. But yes, the, the plan is now to do some sort of glazing or storefront um, as far down towards Easton as possible. That is not a great answer. No. Sorry. I, that, well, I, all you said was... You, we need more loading on that corner, on that so, face. Can, can I, We're so, showing a truck right there. So, so yeah, I get that. We knew that Reese was LA yeah. is a 10,000, a 9,000 square foot retail user. Yep. And it needs to have a loading right. ability, whether it's a lay-by or yeah. a dedicated dock. Yep. Uh, it's not going to be on the parking lot side. It's certainly going to have to be on Easton for access. Yep. Um, they'll have backup house. Again, it has to go somewhere. But similar to how we did building F, right, where we did a back of house facing park, we will treat that corner with the same respect we treated the corners in the back of house for retail F along park. Okay, that's a better answer because well, hearing, hearing we will put glazing as close to the corner as possible doesn't make it sound like you're activating the corner. It makes so it sound like it needs you're your putting piece on the face of Eastern yeah, Road. Like, well, yeah, what we're asking for is something similar to what you have at Park and Willow Grove. Cool. Check. Yes. Good. Okay. With that, uh, I will open it up to anybody from the general public that would like to come up. Uh, must be sworn in. I just have to comment that lighting the trees is light pollution and really bad for birds. But it makes it safe in the interior or, or walking down the street. Well, I hope that any lighting that would be put in would point down and not up because we're killing millions of birds every year. And I'm I know you can check with the Audubon Society, but and it's buildings of four stories or less that actually tend to kill the most. So I would really strongly request that any lighting that's put in points down and not up. I wanted it, but obviously they didn't do it, so it's not going in because the wiring is not there. <laughs> that was just my comment. Uh, anyone else? Uh, first of all, um, I don't think there's going to be enough parking. I don't care what they say. Because, for one thing, um, Park, Park Avenue, people coming in and out of this shopping center, they're either going to go left or right. I can tell you now there's going to be traffic jams because there's no turning lanes into this parking spot, into this parking lot. It's not. And I can see them backing up to like, uh, Morgan. I can see them backing up to East. So I don't know what to tell you. I mean, not that I don't like the progress of it, but I don't think we're going to have enough parking. 
even now, a lot of times I go over there, special occasion, doesn't have to be just Christmas. That parking lot is full. Now, much less saying they've already taken some of the parking away with the new building they're doing, with the new shops or whatever they're doing there by um, the corner there. So other than that, that's the only thing I've got to say. Okay. Thank but you for your comments. It's going to be a real problem on that Park Avenue because a lot of people who use Park Avenue from Easton to go into the shopping center are crossed from Moreland, which is, uh, I don't know what's all in there. There's all the shops, I guess, in their Old Navy and Dicks and, Dicks all, that, yeah. and all that. So I, <laughs> that's why I'm saying I think you're going to see a real problem here because Center Avenue, if they were to take Center Avenue, they cannot coming off of Easton. They cannot turn left on the Moreland to get to this place. So I don't know what to say. Let's okay. put a bridge over the houses. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Yes, sir. I think we're going to have a problem with the apartments. You got the parking garage. You got too much traffic on Eastern Road. You got too much traffic in the center of Willow Grove by Burger King. Now, is the state going to make the highway bigger? As they mentioned. should make Eastern Road all the way to the turnpike wider. And then you will have enough to carry the traffic. What's going to happen, I live on Center Avenue. Everybody's going to take a shortcut, go down Center Avenue and bypass Park Avenue. And everybody goes down Center Avenue, they want to make a stupid left down by the VFW. I told, I asked the township to put a cop there. He would make his salary for the whole month <laughs> with tickets. People don't look at the sign that says right turn only. No, you have somebody that comes from Jersey, they can't read the sign. They want to make a left. <laughs> and if one of these days you're going to have a five car accident because somebody made the left and somebody wants to go across to the shopping center where Kmart used to be. <laughs> That's the only thing I got to say. Now I don't think where's the get where they're gonna build this apartment. Directly across the street, right if you walked out the front of the building, it's right there. Across from the library? No. Across from this building. Across the police station. Across from the police station, yeah. on the corner of on the, the corner. other stores where the, the bank is and uh, where the, no, what no. is a bank. Not the bank. The bank is staying. We, they weren't able to buy that. The guy won't sell it. But uh, other than that, just that little piece, mm -hmm. it's directly across from this township building. Oh. Huh. We would love to have the bank. Huh? We would love to have somebody be able to buy that bank. Well, <laughs> that's a landmark. And, uh, I was here 65 years ago. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's a landmark. That, that was Old York Road Bank. Yep. And then back in the days when my parents, that was a bank in 1929, went belly high when they had this, everybody lost their money. <laughs> and it's going to put a lot of traffic on Center Avenue. You have people coming down York Road and across, and they bang, they hit the, they're doing over 25 miles an hour, and then they have to stop for the four-way stop sign. Don't make no sense. And then another thing, we, you got a big trouble with that loop that comes from York Road. They should not have those tractor and trailers making a turn there. How many times the electric company 
had to replace that pole. That they couldn't make the turn. And the way they had the car stopping on Eastern mm -hmm. Road, they should have, the car is over here on the right, should be stopping back further because the traffic Truck. trail can make his turn. Now you can get some people, they don't understand. The tractor trailer is trying to go around. They don't have the knowledge to back up and let them do this turn. We do see that. You are absolutely correct there. You no, know, well, what they what they have to do is put a, a fifth wheel yeah. on a tractor trailer, yeah. and then they can make the turn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's all I got to say. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else? You ready to go home? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Uh, <laughs> would you like to make any closing comments? No, I, I think you have a long agenda this evening. I think you understand the application. I would just ask that the uh, exhibits that were presented be accepted into the record. Yes. Thank you. Uh, are you <laughs> Good short answer. <laughs> I don't know. Is there going to be a vote this evening, or I think they have to discuss they that. Have to I discuss think they'll that. probably okay. close the public uh, hearing. I yes. assume. But, yeah. Make a motion to close public hearing 1965. Or do we want to uh, delay it? Or do you want to continue it and get more information? Well, there's the public hearing, and then there's the vote on the actual. Yeah, I, yeah. Just we, so if so we close it, the discussions over. The discussions over. Even, you have 45 days to issue. We have 45 days yes. to vote. Yep. So, I, while we're still the hearing hasn't been closed yet, I, I'm not. I'm. I've heard enough, uh, but I'm not in favor of voting tonight. I would probably look for more answers some of the questions we posed. Okay. Well, let me, let's just so everyone understood, uh, understands. So what would happen is, is if you close the hearing tonight and don't make a decision, what we'd probably do is I'd work with Matt to schedule uh, before one of the, your future meetings coming up uh, soon, um, you know, an executive session where you're, you're deliberating, talking about this, to give my, to give my office some guidance on, we'd have like a draft, you know, conditional use decision, but other conditions that you may have heard or ideas you have, I would have to go back and talk to the applicant about that, see if they see if those were conditions that would be acceptable to them. Maybe they are not, you choose to act on them anyway, but normally there is a back and forth on those kind of conditions. So that's how I would envision uh, a process going forward for the board, just so you, you understand my Process. We are going to, and in the meantime, what we would do is we'd also go ahead and get the transcript, uh, and I would email it out to all of you. you. Can review whatever points you wanted to do, look at the exhibits, or whatever you wanted to do. Okay, so we are going to close the meeting. Close the hearing. Tonight. Yeah. The, the hearing, yeah. uh, and then it will be voted on within the next forty-five days. Yeah. But you will probably hear from Sean. Understood. So yeah. So what would happen? So what happened is we would prepare a written. Uh, a written decision order, uh, probably bounce it off uh, Mr. Freemove's office. And uh, uh, you guys go first, you give me the guidance, I talk to him, then there's a public vote. That's how it would work. Okay, with that, I'll Make take a motion to uh, end public hearing 1965. Second. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Opposed? Okay, approved. Great. Thank so, you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> And we will all, we all discuss this together in executive session. You, you can go. Yeah, I wondered that too, but I would like to. Turn it here for the hearing. So let me give you my card. So as soon as you have it, um, the transcripts, oh, yeah. send it over to me. Thank you. So when, uh, just a question. Can we meet in executive session? Yep. This is like a zoning hearing. A conditional use is like a zoning hearing. Okay. So you can meet and deliberate like a zoning hearing board would okay. on a decision. Same, okay. As long as we have the same options. Same good. case law governance. That's, no, yes, that's we what we'll can. do. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Now that everybody's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Public comments, not agenda items only. Okay. Treasurer's activity report. Make a motion to approve the treasurer's activity report for May 2023. Second. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor, say aye. 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 Against? So moved. Uh, Make a motion to approve the minutes of May 1st, 2023. 
Thank you. I have a motion. We have a second. Any commissioner comments? Any public comments? Okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Okay. So moved. Uh, committee recommendations, finance, and administration. Mr. Valenza. Okay. <clears throat> the finance and, and administrative committee recommends the appointment, um, the approval of the appointment of Shari uh, Sharia? Sharia. Uh, Sharia. Wallace on the Human Relations Commission to fill the vacancy left by Wesley Moy and complete the current term that will expire December 31st, 2024. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion from the commissioners? Any discussion from the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Approved. Okay, next we go on the list of bills payable. <clears throat> the committee recommends the approval of general fund checks beginning with check number 137576 and ending with 137918 for a, for a total of $975,681 with no voids. Escrow fund checks beginning with check number 9622 and ending with 9634 for a total of $53,037.42 with no voids. And liquid fuel fund checks, beginning with check number 3064 and ending with 3069 for a total of $15,537.04 with no voids. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, commissioners, comments, public? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Against? Approved. Okay. Next we have two, four, six, Eight items on their other items. Um, first is a motion to approve ordinance number 1740 amending the township code of ordinances uh, involving the volunteer service credit program. We have a second. second. Okay. No second. Second. I said second. Oh, okay. Um, this was discussed probably last six months in committee <laughs> and uh, uh, just so that everybody knows, we're allowed to uh, provide an EIT credit up to $500, and the amended ordinance, the EIT is allowed to be increased to $1,000. So that's one of the changes we're making, and I think we're going to 20% of municipal real estate obligations. Um, right, from 20 to 100. Yeah. Right. So since we instituted this program, the law changed to increase um, the allowable credits. So we're, that's what this does is align with those allowable credits, increased allowable credits. Okay. Any other public comment or commissioner comment? Any public comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Approved? Okay, we, next we have a few tax appeals. Um, so we have a uh, motion to approve the tax assessment appeal between the township, the school district, and in, in two properties um, for the property located at 607 Eastern Road. Right next, it's right next to the post office. Uh, condo two and condo four. Second. Okay, we have a first, a second. Uh, any other commissioner comments? Can I make a quick comment? Sure. Um, we're, we're voting, but we have two members of our board who stepped aside for a second. Two? Can we, can I have Charles, uh, but... Take a, maybe a brief pause here. Yeah. We'll wait for them to come back. Okay. That's great. Yeah, I thought we only lost one. Yeah. Was this Charles? Charles. Was it Nick? Oh. Yeah. No. Sorry. No, that's okay. I didn't notice either. I didn't see Dick. I saw Charles. Hey. Yeah, we spent like two hours in public hearing, so I think uh, yeah, it was a well-deserved break. Yeah. Is...
Have a good night. Thank you. We got home here and it didn't rain at all. And where? That's the way back. Oh, it started at six? Oh. The tournament? No, no, no. The lightning. The lightning. Yeah. Yeah. So, will you finish it sometime? Huh. Two groups. <laughs> you should have never told me. So they So I was just going to ask you, good. is he better Okay, we have Charles back. Uh, we are going to continue. <laughs> uh, and Nick. Nick was out too. <laughs> and I was gone at some point too. You think we have dinner? Yeah, Nobody noticed. <laughs> <laughs> here so long, he went out for dinner. Okay, uh, we were on B. Okay, uh, Commissioner comment. Uh, we didn't hear any, but you two were not here. This is a refund to the property owner of $619. Okay. Any public comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Approved? C. Okay. Uh, C. Motion to approve the tax assessment appeal between the township, the school district, of Arkham Morgan, and the taxpayer. Ava Realty, uh, Willow Grove LLC, um, for a property located at 2440 Maryland. This is. Um, Second. The yeah, go ahead. Second. Yep. I think this is the part. The, um, this one's hotel. the fair, yeah, the yeah. Fairfield yep. Hotel. Yeah. So, okay. Um, go ahead. Uh, we have not, this is a $19,855 refund. This is, uh, um, is this the one over three years? 24 or 40 years. That's right. Over two years, so this is uh, we owe for 2022 and 2023. Okay. Can we have yeah. a second? Okay, Already. Yep. We have a second. Uh, any other comments from commissioners? Any comments from the public? All in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Approve. Okay. Um, D. Motion to approve, approve the tax assessment appeal between the town and school district. Second. We have a second. Any other okay. questions? Um, this is the Willow Grove Point Apartments. But uh, this, is, there, this is an additional fee paid to the township uh, from the property owner of $8,612. Okay. No other questions? Any questions from the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Approved? Okay. E. Motion to approve the tax assessment appeal between the town of the school district and uh, the tax bearer. Okay. Yeah. Azim and Dina uh, for the property of 
located at 800 South York Road in Hopkins Morning. This is uh, second. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Against. Approved. Okay, next is that. Motion to the tax assessment appeal between the Tadman School District and the taxpayer of Haynes Plaza Association for the Department of Education 101 East Moreland. Second. Motion or a second. Any other questions from the board? Decrease or decrease? Uh, we have to be finding the property owner of 52.99. And that's over uh, multiple years. Okay. That's for multiple years, I should say. All right. Uh, any public comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Against. Approved. And G. Motion to approve the tax assessment appeal between the Town School District of Upper Moreland and 1113 Northeastern Road, LLC. This is the uh, old homestead. Uh, not sure what it's Garden called. Spring. Oh, yeah, Garden Spring. Second. Yeah. And this is uh, three year 2021. Overpayment, and this uh, is $31,873. Okay. Any other commissioner comments? Any public comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Against. Approved. Okay. Um, motion to, under new business, motion to approve and ratify hazard mitigation grant program agreement between the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, and for the purchase of four homes affected by tropical storm Ida. Second. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, any other comments from the? Yeah, I have a comment. When was Ida? What year? Uh, Twenty-one. September first, twenty-one. I think. Let's go. Yeah. That point being made, this is well overdue. Yes. <laughs> and unfortunately, it takes the state this long. <laughs> you have to okay. use the microphone to say anything else. That's okay. okay. Um, so then, then I have a follow-up question to that, too. Um, when will the performance of this grant be completed? That's a great question. Um, it, it, we're dealing with the federal government, so there's a number of steps. But I would, I would guess, based on the conversations I've had, that will hopefully be going to settlement with these property owners in the next 60 to 90 days. Right. That would be my hope. Randy, this total $1,493,041 that we're receiving as form of a grant, do we have any copay? No. No. Okay. I didn't want to make sure that that wasn't That's, yeah. And in this... I'm in favor of this. This is... We did this very well when we did when the, bio, the people on Mill Road were bought. Actually, we didn't do as good as this. Yeah. And uh, in this, we do have money from this for the teardowns and uh, everything else, loving it all. Yeah, that $1.4 million includes the purchase and include, includes everything. Yep. Okay. And more open space, eventually. That's loving it. Yeah, there, Get the motors out. <laughs> The other question for you, Matt, um, it references exhibits A through E as criteria for us to follow along with, but that wasn't in this. You read through them, no concerns with yeah, we're, our attention? Yeah. Okay, the, the interesting thing about those agreements is even if we did have concerns, which we don't, can't do we can't do anything about it anyway. <laughs> it's the federal government. They're not going to change it. But yeah, we're, we're, Alex and I discussed it. I think we're comfortable with it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Aye. All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Okay, approved. That concludes business for finance administration. Okay, community development, Ms. Spearing. Thank you very much, President McFatridge. The community development has several action items this evening. Uh, under code enforcement, land development subdivision, we have no applications. List of, list of upcoming, upcoming zoning hearing board meetings, we have no applications. The Community Development Committee recommends motion to approve ordinance number 1741 amending the township map to rezone tax parcels currently split zone O office uh, O office.
office district to I limited industrial district for the redevelopment of the property known as Executive Muse, located at 2300, let's say 2309 and 2317 Blair Mill Road. Second. Thank you. Make sure you're second. Any other uh, comments? Yeah, so you'll see uh, under this that um, the 2300 Computer Road is also one of the addresses, uh, but that is already zoned I. And uh, these other properties that have frontage on Blair Mill Road are being rezoned so the area can be consolidated and apartments can be built. And I'm in favor of this. That was the question I asked. Got <laughs> no, like, the answer again. Yeah, it's a stupid question, but <laughs> well, we, we did have several presentations in this room, though. About okay. Any, any other questions from the board? Public? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Approved. Uh, letter B, motion to approve ordinance 1742 amending the zoning map to rezone eight tax parcels currently split zone from TC1 town center institutional and R4 zoning district to TC currently split zone. Right. Uh, institutional and R4 residential zone districts to TC1 town center zoning district for the land located at Center Avenue and Park Avenue known as the Township Municipal Complex. Second. A motion, we have a second. Uh, discussions from anybody on the board? Motion and second. During the testimony, I alluded to six parcels that were loaded, loaded, zoned R4, which I think is correct. And then there's I didn't include those comments about um, the parking lots that are currently zoned in institutional. So they will all be TC1 to have our entire municipal complex consistent with our uh, vision of town center. Okay. No other questions? Any public comments? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Uh, letter C, Community Development Committee recommends a motion to approve the awarding of the Wormister Road Sidewalk Project contract to LB Const Construction Enterprises. Second. The motion, we have a second. Uh, this is a uh, bid document for sidewalks on Wormister Road uh, up to the Wormister Road Bridge. Uh, that the road's currently closed, and we're expecting to have this completed before the bridge opens. I did see an excavator there. Uh, You've been pushing for this for a long time. <laughs> we have. Yeah. But, uh, okay, any other comments? Public? Yeah, so Commissioner Rollins is here, but I'm going to put on my Commissioner Rollins a hat. Uh, <laughs> we've got $200,000 in grant money. The, the, the base bid is two forty one. dollars so we have some overage. I think we asked this question last time. You were going to go back and figure out where the rest of that money is. Well, our match is 40000 to that. Okay. So the challenge we have, and it is a challenge. Remember, when all this was done, we've had two years' worth of inflation. So if there's no cost overruns, we're going to be fine. Um, but that's the problem, is if there, are, if there are unexpected things, we don't have that cushion because of the inflation that's happened over the last two years. Okay. And then did, are we, did we select the alternate? also or are we just doing the base bid no we're doing we're doing what we can afford so i don't have it all in front of me but it was the two the 240 i think was what it was 241 for the base bid and then another seventeen thousand for for an alternate and i don't think we added it in there because of the cost okay so we kept it to what we was in the budget but the board should be aware that i'm sorry guys what was the alternate i don't remember the alternate was for milling and paving to the center line of Warminster Road if required during construction. Yeah, I think the idea was trying to get PennDOT to, to do that. But highway, right? Yeah. yeah. But it, so it, there's, a, it, there's not a lot of room for error on that, and that was because of the inflation. So uh, let me ask you, um, where's Randy? He left. <laughs> uh, Smart so, um, say we had change orders associated with this. Are we allowed to use uh, traffic impact money for this? Traffic impact fee for side. I'd have to check with Randy to be sure. I don't know. 
Now, if you were saying curb and roadway, obviously, yes. But on sidewalk, I'm not entirely sure. I would have to, I, I, I believe so, but, but I think I need to confirm with him. Okay, any other questions? Public comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Approved? No, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, where was it? Okay, letter E. Um, e. D, yes. Uh, motion to approve the uh, the city the community development committee recommends the motion to approve the proposal for Main Street fence to install the fence at the Upper Moreland Republic Library. Second. Yeah, motion is second. Go ahead. Motion and second. This is also a long awaited uh, task, and this is a it's a great addition to our library that will enhance the community involvement as part of our outdoor education center and I'm very excited about this. Okay, the only uh, thing I have is with the survey, the survey, there might have been six inches, eight inches that the other person spent. I don't know if it's next to the library, up farther, whichever. Uh, I think Matt and uh, Sean can work that out with them. I don't think we tell them to take it down. We just want to notify them it is our property for that six inches or whatever, but they can work that out for us uh, with them. Uh, so that was found out today. Well, it was done Friday, but uh, Jim Hirsch called me today saying that. So uh, with that, any other comments from the board? Any comments from the public? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Against? Approved? Okay. Letter A, Community Development Committee recommends motion to approve the memorandum of understanding between the Township and Gerald and Janice DiMarzio for the installation of historic signage at the property located at 210 York Road. Second. Motion and second. Uh, motion and second. This is uh, another uh, recognition of a historical property uh, and uh, acceptance of a long a walking trail that was originally defined as a, you know, uh, a concept for people to understand more and educate more about the history of Willow Grove. Yeah, I'm very thankful for the DeMarzios uh, agreeing to this. This is this is great. Uh, it's been in discussion for a while. I'd also like to thank the Historical Commission uh, and the Historical Association for their efforts in, in putting this together and, and pushing it along. Um, there's one clarification that I want to make on this. This sign has already been purchased and funded. Um, so there's that fiscal impact and, and source notation down here that says uh, the township is responsible for the cost of the sign. That was paid for as part of the HC's budget last year. Um, so there is no cost for the sign from the township, just the installation. Okay. Any other comments? Any public? I just want to want to say uh, this is probably the last historic building in the downtown area, other than the Aaronfort building. Um, and I hope this is a step in giving it recognition and ma making people appreciate for what it is. I hate to see it go. Me too. I grew up there. <laughs> You're still growing up. Yeah, he didn't grow up yet. <laughs> Been going there since I was three days old. <laughs> uh, okay. Any public comment? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Against? Approved. That concludes the business of the Community Development Committee. Public health and safety. I'm very sorry, Commissioner yeah. Whiting. Real quick, I forgot to mention this to, to Matt. Um, there's a note in in that memorandum about Exhibit A, uh, having the sketch. Just make sure that that's attached to this exhibit because we didn't get that as part of our back. Yeah, we've got to site locate the sign. Yeah. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, Apologies to backtrack. Um, and who, do you, who would be the people that would work with us to site locate that from the commissioner? Is there any particular person that you're aware of, or, is, or should we just do it at a staff level? Yeah, I think um, the, the DeMarzios noted a spot. Um, there's a tree out there on the property, so they're aware of where that is, and I know that that's already been discussed between the HC and- Is that where the preferred location was? So yes. Okay. Sorry, Commissioner Whiting. I before you start, Charles, uh, Cheryl just brought up, we, it was not on the schedule 
anyway for a vote tonight for Willow Grove Shop. Yep, there was not on the agenda. Just so everybody knows uh, we don't have to. say that, that's right. Yeah, okay. We said it earlier correct. that it would be here. So, okay. Now, Mr. Whiting. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we're still here. Hey, we're still here after all these years. Okay. Uh, we have some motions and ordinance we want to approve tonight. And Chief Block, you still with me? Yes, sir. Okay, we're going to talk about motion ordinance. 1743. Go ahead, Chief. Uh, we request that this uh, ordinance be approved. It's amending the Township Code of Ordinances to add the certain parking restrictions along Barrett Avenue or Barrett Road, rather, at the uh, where it meets with Easton Road. So, on the north side, as we had proposed from the committee, is to restrict the north side of Barrett at 85 feet from Easton Road and on the south side, 110 <coughs> feet from Easton Road, uh, simply because of the sight distance and parking issues that are occurring up there. So it's a public safety uh, concern. Okay. Discussion committee, anybody else have any comments? No, thank you for this. Yeah. Board four, it surely is a uh, safety issue. So thanks for pushing this along. And You're doing quite welcome. Stuff. Glad we got it through. Yep. Okay. Any public comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Against, approved. Okay, the next one is we approve, motion to approve payment of the feral cat invoice chief that's correct uh just to refresh the board's uh recollection um we had uh residents come in from dorothy uh complaining about feral cats up there we've done extensive research on it and we were using forgotten cats uh, along with volunteer trappers to go out and trap the cats um, and have them uh, spayed or neutered and returned to the neighborhood so to date there's only been two cats that have been trapped um and spayed and neutered and returned and as a result of that, the invoice for that is $150. So I would request that the board approve this motion so that we can pay forgotten cats. Why, were, why have there only been two trapped to date? That's all they've located. There's a third. Because I thought there was like so many. I'm surprised. That's, what, not... that's what we were told. Uh, the trappers been moving around uh, to different properties where they're permitted to go on there. Um, so, but at this point, there was a third that they were trying to locate. I also, uh, to that end, I also believe that uh, there was a, uh, a known party that was feeding the cats. They were approached by the police and, and she agreed to stop feeding the cats. And I, I, I think that has something to do with them going elsewhere. So. Uh, it's not chat, cats changing clothes and looking like that. <laughs> I didn't see any striped hats on that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Okay, any uh, public comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Against, approved. That's all we have to report this evening. All right, Parks and Recreation. Uh, Mr. Skull. Thank you. Uh, Parks and Recreation has uh, two items tonight. Uh, one is to approve the re-advertising of bids for the Farmstead uh, Park Carriage House improvements. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, so, as we all know, the bids came in way too high, um, and the package has been redesigned and re-planned, uh, and uh, we're going to get a bid it again. Okay. Any public comment? Uh, sorry, Commissioner Comment. Uh, Mr. Stasio. So, we talked during the um, Park and Recreation Committee meeting last month about generating a list of the quantities of projects the allocation of funds that are associated with that. I'm definitely for re-advertising the bids for this. I just want to make sure that in taking this step at this point, it's not handicapping us for any future projects uh, because we'll be taking money away from those projects for this. It will not be, no. And we're, we're in the midst of putting that together. We're really going to wait for the bid results to come in to see how much extra money we may have. Okay. And uh, so while you're there, Mr. Stasio, <laughs> uh, is this the final item that will permit us to uh, remove the fence? No, no this is the carriage house. It is not the barn. No offense to the carriage one. house? No. Oh, no. Oh, that is the next one. You're right. right. Now, yeah, the, the fence is around the barn. This one is, is just the, the carriage house repairs. However, I, okay. I'm talking about the next one. Mm. <laughs> you got to vote, right? Yes. yes. Any public comment? All in favor, say aye. 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 Against. 
approved. Okay, this, the uh, second motion is to approve the diminishment of the cottage at the at Farmstead Park and approved services of Heartland Restoration, Inc. Um, so that, that's what, at least we're talking about taking down the fence around the carriage house. Uh, the fence around the barn is another another whole project. But, but that is part, is part of it. Okay. We, we, uh, we might remember we uh, plan to take money from the uh, ARPA money uh, to uh, take care of part of this. And this is, yeah. this is that, that phase of that. Um, and I just want to say we hired Heartland Restoration. Um, it's very, very interesting to me because they actually really saved the barn, the whole project from the township. So the, some of the commissioners at that time wanted to uh, uh, just tear it down. Uh, and we had to get the shed demolished, you know, safely. Uh, and he uh, came in with his equipment, did far more work than you know, the scope of taking the shed down, cleaned out the building. Uh, he was very interested in it, uh, exposed all the, you know, the stuff from the 1850s uh, and, and did a great job. I learned a lot from it uh, uh, with him. And now he's coming back to do the, uh, the uh, cottage and I'm sure he's going to do a great job so any other comments yeah two sorry um, this is still referencing friends of Boilo the contract is still referencing friends of Boilo so let's update that to say farmer and alliance yeah that's the the contract he wrote with the, the friends of Boilo yes yeah okay and then the other one uh, just to clarify this is for one location right because under the general description of location of properties is demolition of three separate areas it's one location. Okay. It's one location. It's the cottage. Right. Um, right. Okay, any public comment? All in favor say aye. Aye. You read that. Against? <laughs> aye. And that's the end of Parks and Recreation. Approved. Uh, any other commissioner comments? Except for Kevin. Uh, for the end of the meeting or just for Parks yes. and Rec? Okay. Oh, we're still in Parks and Rec. We need to include that. I said, that's the end of. Okay. Under commissioner Explain comments. Explain it to Mr. Spear. Under commissioner <laughs> comments. See I would the words just, coming out of my mouth. I'd like, I, I'd like to uh, thank those that participated and uh, let everybody know that we uh, did raise a pride flag on uh, June 1st. And uh, there were several members of the community that came out and assisted us. And we were uh, also received assistance from the police department. So thank you all. And uh, I wasn't able to make it that night, but I was glad to hear there wasn't any, you know, bitterness, you know, f from the community that's going on in so many other places. Unlike the school district, we have had very respectful reception of our pride flag right. and, and, and our uh, right. continued behavior. Towards that. I'm just thinking about the... I was late. You were there, though. Thank you very much. I was much. late. Think about the people going into uh, Target and tearing out the kids clothes with pride flags on it. Yeah. I'm glad none of that happened. Okay. Very respectful. Meeting adjourned. We want to say congratulations to the class of 2023 Upper Moreland High School. Congratulations. Very good yeah. point. And they will be graduating tomorrow night. Thank you, Charles. That's awesome. Uh, well, I think since we're done, but I would say for the board, we'll probably be meeting next Monday.